All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Town of Queensbury Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020. Uh, this is our second meeting for the month of December, our 19th meeting for 2020, and our 15th meeting under the COVID pandemic guidelines. Um, please note the illuminated emergency exit signs in the in event of an emergency, that is your way out. Uh, if you have a cell phone or other electronic device, if you would either turn it off or turn the ringer off so it wouldn't interfere with our meeting, we'd appreciate it. There are some items for which there are a public hearing this evening, and we have a telephone uh, link available for those watching this meeting on the town YouTube channel. Uh, and I will remind people in the uh, in the time where the actual public hearing is to take place. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll just let you know if you want to jot down this number. Uh, the telephone number to call if you wish to comment by phone is area code 518-761-8225. Uh, those of you in attendance, if you are going to be addressing the board uh, when you're done, there's some uh, 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 sterilizing wipes on the podium, if you would wipe the mic down so that uh, it's clean for the next person, we'd appreciate that. And I think with that, we have quite a number of administrative items actually this evening. Um, the first being that uh, this meeting, the last meeting in December is our, what we consider our annual meeting. And one of the events that we conduct at that meeting is the election of officers. Um, we changed our procedure back in 2017 um, to codify the process by which that takes place. Um, the, there are three, three officer positions on the planning board. There's the secretary, vice chairman, and chairman. Uh, the planning board votes on the three positions. Uh, however, the ch position of chairman uh, is confirmed by the full town board, uh, typically at the first meeting of the board in uh, January at their annual meeting. Um, one of the duties of the chair, which I am this, this year, is to um, check with the op current officers in the month of November to see if they would be willing to serve another term. Uh, if they are, then those names are automatically put in nomination for those positions. Uh, but in addition to that, we also uh, accept nominations from the floor uh, for those three positions. So. I'm happy to report that uh, David, Chris, and myself are all ready, willing, and able to serve another year in our, uh, in our positions as secretary, vice chair, and chair, respectively. Uh, and at that point, I will open the nominations for the, from the floor for any of those positions. Are there any nominations for secretary, vice chair, or chair from the floor? Okay, um, then we'll entertain a motion to close the nominations and that the board should vote on the slate of officers according to the draft resolution provided by staff. Mm -hmm. Motion to close the nominations and that the board vote on the slate of officers. I'll second it. We have a uh, motion to close the nominations made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Maria, can we have the vote, please? Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hansinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. Uh, and with that, uh, then we will uh, make a motion or we'll entertain a motion to vote for the current slate of officers for the 2021 Planning Board. Motion to vote for the slate of officers for the 2021 Planning Board. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that motion? Maria, could you call the vote for us, please? Ms. White? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Hunsinger? Yes. Ms. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Dixon? Yes. Ms. Traver? Yes. All right, so we've taken care of that business. I would just like to comment uh, particularly to David and Chris. David isn't with us tonight, but uh, I just want to express my appreciation for all the, the hard work. I think we, we did well this year. We handled some interesting projects and uh, processed them well. As far as I know, we have no 
complaints, formal complaints or litigation uh, based on decisions that we made during the year. So that's, they say any year you can walk away from as a planning board is a good year, right? A lot of wood for all of us there in that last one. Thank you. All right, so we'll look forward to 2021. Uh, with that, we'll move on. We do have a, a number of tablings this evening. Uh, the first one is for site plan 42-2020, Paganowski is requesting a further tabling until uh, next month. Laura? Uh, so this applicant has submitted revised plans. They do need to be reviewed by the zoning board prior to them coming back to this board. So uh, the tabling should be probably to the 23rd of February. 23rd. Okay. And I think we have a draft, yes, we have a draft resolution to that effect. I'm sorry, not the fe not that one. I'm gonna apologize. Paganowski would be back in January. Okay. And that'll be to the 26th. Is that what, I believe that's what your resolution should say. Okay. We've got information. Are we just doing the tabling without the information? Yeah. All right. You ready? Yep. Motion to table site plan 42-2020, Bill Pognowski, I'm sorry. Uh, tabled until January 26, 2021. We'll second it. Uh, we have a tabling motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the tabling? Okay, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Schaefer? Yes. 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 Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Trevor? Yes. Uh, next we have a request for further tabling for site plan 49-2020, Godnick. Uh, Laura? So this applicant requests to be tabled to February and they are updating their plans to present to the zoning board. Okay, is there a particular meeting date? So this would be the 23rd of February. February 23rd, okay. So we have a motion, we just need to amend that. You've done that already, yeah. okay. Motion to table site plan 49-2020, Jeffrey Godnick. Table until February 23rd, 2021. Uh, planning board meeting with information due by January 15th, 2021. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a tabling motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that tabling motion? Just a question? Yes. Sure. Uh, or did you say they were going back to the ZBA? Correct. Can you explain why? The Z have we seen this one before? You have. You, you did a planning board recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. and Why would a change plan go to the ZBA first rather than here? Because it stopped at the ZBA. So the DBA gets the, the and, it, and it, this is a change that um, in regards to a permeability request at the zoning board level. So we will see it again as a site plan? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they will, they, if they get through the ZBA, they'll be back for sure. Uh, okay, do we vote on that, Maria? No, Can we no. have the vote, please? Was there a motion made? Yes. Yes, Michael. Yeah. Uh, Chris seconded it. Chris seconded it. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Trevor? Yes. Next, we have a request for further tabling uh, from Hartman for site plan 21-2020, uh, Laura? So this applicant, as maybe you remember, this applicant did, a, did not attend the planning board recommendation stage of the review of the application. However, the applicant has experienced some other hardships, so they've asked to be tabled to March. And so I have March 16th of 2021. Okay, you get that? Yep. Okay. Motion to table site plan 21-2020, David Hartman. Uh, tabled until March 16th, 2021, planning board meeting with information due by February 15th, 2021. I'll second the motion. 
We have a tabling motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, hearing none, Murray, can you call the vote, please? Sanzer? Yes. McGowan? Yes. Valentine? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Traver? Yes. Uh, next we have, under old business, uh, Rockhurst LLC site plan 57-2020. Uh, that application is gonna be tabled as well. Uh, Laura? So this application went before the Zoning Board of Appeals and for that evening they only had a five member board. The applicants were given an option to uh, be tabled to have a full board and that's what this applicant chose to do. Oh. So they will have to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals and then back to the Planning Board. So uh, we don't, do we have a specific date that they're requesting? Yeah, so January 26th of 2021. January 26th, okay. So they're gonna be going, uh, they hope to go before the ZBA on what, the 25th? The 20th. Or 20, yeah, okay. All right, and this application, we did hear this, uh, as you recall, we made a, uh, a recommendation to the ZBA, uh, but we will not be seeing them again for site plan review until they do get a discussion with the ZBA uh, regarding their variances. Um, and we don't know what changes may take place in their application. Uh, but we will, uh, because we'll be seeing this again in uh, January, we will open the public hearing. Um, and uh, we have a, I believe we have a draft motion to table this as well. Yes. Yeah. Motion to table site plan 57-2020 Rockhurst LLC. Tabled until January 26, 2021, planning board meeting. Second it. Okay, we have a tabling motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Uh, next, the next item uh, is Harrisina Church. Subdivision preliminary stage 16-2020, I believe has asked to be tabled for the same reason, Laura? Correct, there wasn't a full board. They asked to uh, be in front of the zoning board with a full board. Okay, and I believe they're also to be tabled uh, so we would see them on the 26th as well next month? Correct. Okay, all right. Motion to table subdivision preliminary stage 16-2020 Harrisina Church, tabled until January 26, 2021, planning board meeting. Second it. We have a tabling motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Hunsinger? Yes. Ms. Traver? Yes. Uh, next, we have another uh, tabling request from uh, Joseph Lucy, site plan 56-2020, Laura. So this applicant is being requested to be tabled because they're making some changes to the plans and they, uh, February 16th. February 16th, sounds like January and February are gonna be interesting months. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we don't have a draft resolution for this, I don't believe, but uh, it's a straightforward table. All right. Motion to table site plan 56-2020, Joseph Lucy, to the February 16th, 2021 planning board meeting. Second it. We have a tabling motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Hunsinger? Yes. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. And last but not least, um, we were alerted also that Foothills Builders uh, Subdivision Sketch Plan 2020 uh, ha was on our agenda for this evening and uh, they are not going to be uh, doing a, a sketch plan discussion with us tonight. Uh, Laura, I don't know if you have any additional information. I know you're, you're gonna let us know when they are prepared to get back on the agenda for discussion. Correct, they need to work some details out with DEC and uh, possibly some departments with the town and then they'll uh, provide an updated plan potentially and be back in front of the board. I don't know at what time. 
Right, okay. Uh, but we don't need a tabling motion for that because it's just a discussion item. Correct. Uh, so with that, I think those are all of the administrative items that we have before us this evening. So we can actually get some work done. Um, first item, is, the first section is tabled items. We have an item under unapproved development, which is Apex Capital LLC, uh, site plan 53-2019. Uh, Laura? Right, so tonight's agenda, we, we had this project back um, in September of 2019 until now. The applicant has worked diligently with the town engineer in our office in regards to stormwater and other details on the site plan, and they have come to resolve, and so this board tonight can potentially do the seeker review as well to provide a recommendation to the town board for the two parcels that they wish to rezone. Right, okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. For the record, John Lapper, um, Spencer Montgomery is here on behalf of West Mountain, the applicant, and Matt Huntington, the project engineer. Um, before COVID, we were here a bunch and then we got delayed. Um, it's obviously a more important project because it's something that you can do outside safely. Um, there's always been a parking problem, so they acquired the two lots along West Mountain Road. Um, since the last time we were here, as Laura mentioned, Matt went out with the town engineer, um, Jason, and uh, did a site visit, site walk, and came up with some stormwater modifications which we submitted. So we're hoping that at this point you're ready to do seeker because you're seeker for both you and the town board. Make the recommendation to the town board so we can go for the rezoning on those two parcels um, and then come back and finalize the site plan with you after the, after the rezoning. Um, the two lots would be recreation commercial in front rather than moderate right. density. And this is specifically for the uh, alterations to the parking area, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, let, let me correct that. There's The zip line is no longer part of the project, but there are also were some modifications for the mountain bike trails, which is still part right. of it. And yeah, which so, is, I think, the pre-existing non-conforming yes. development, right? Um, Yes, there, there were some minor changes to some of the paths, and, and that required a little bit of stormwater. Okay. All right, uh, questions, comments from members of the board? We're looking at Seeker, and uh, if the board is comfortable, we would make a referral recommendation regarding uh, the town board's uh, making a, um, a change to the uh, <coughs> zoning. I'm happy to move forward. Okay. Are there any environmental concerns? Uh, John, you look like you have a question. I, a question really, uh, the fire marshal had a question about the design of the access roads. Yes, and I didn't see a detailed cross-section in the plans. What is the, what is the thinking? Uh, that, that we will comply with the, with the fire marshal's request just about access and, and lane, lane widths. For heavy vehicles. Yep. Good. Mr. Chairman, I do have some public comment that I can read into the record. Okay. So this is addressed to the planning board. This letter is a response for the public hearing on 1217 regarding the rezone and subsequent approval of West Mountain parking lot expansion. Our property is the second lot from the southern border of the West Mountain property. We are opposed to change in zoning, allowing a parking lot where a residential property is currently zoned. Adjacent property owners will lose privacy, be exposed to increased noise, increased light, pollution, and overall decreasing property values. In the event the zoning and parking lot is approved, it is asked the following contingency be considered. One, true raised earthen berm. The current parking lot site plan included a vegetative buffer along with a small elevated berm. This berm is not true earth and is simply a pile of wood chips left from where the lot was cleared. It is relatively inadequate and provide any line of sight privacy to the neighboring properties. We request that a real berm, a small hill of earth on the order of 10 feet tall lined with evergreen trees be installed along, along the length of the parking lot. The current noted vegetative buffer on the site plan is limited in the winter when all the leaves are down. Number two, overflow use only. If the parking lot is truly needed for overflow use, then it is reasonable to ask that the parking be restricted in this lot until capacity is reached in the main lot to ensure limited use, except in capacity situations. It is asked that the, an entry barrier, such as a gate or rope off, be employed and only opened when needed. 
This will also prevent unwanted activity in the far corners of the parking lot, which has occurred numerous times. Uh, number three, lighting. If it, it is requested that parking lot lighting only be used or turned on while the parking lot is used. Also lighting that only illuminates down and light the parking lot is requested as opposed to flood light, lighting that shines into neighboring properties. We respectfully submit our feedback and hope the planning board will hear and comply with the request of the tax paying neighbors. And this is Thomas and Mara Powell. Uh, this is also addressed to the planning board. We are writing in opposition to the application of 53-2019 for zoning rec reclassification. Currently we are property owners and residents at 10 Afro Circle. We purchased and had our home built there in 2018. To give a brief background, we purchased and built this home with the intent of living near the ski operation. Our family frequents the mountain during the winter time. We also see the need for business to thrive and be profitable. This mountain is a large success a source of revenue for the town and we'd much rather live near a successful business than a failing one. It is critical that we support local business. We have no complaints as to West Mountain as their ownership. However, as a resident, we do enjoy our privacy. We purchased the home knowing full well ski operations would be part of a winter life, hearing the snow guns, the access traffic during peak days and festivals. All of those are part of what we acknowledge. The overflow parking and rezoning does present some concerns that should be addressed prior to any approval. As neighboring properties, we would like the ability to reach a fair compromise. We echo a lot of the concerns the pre previous residents raised in prior hearings. The increased noise, air lighting pollution does give us pause. We live in a two-story home that our four bedroom, our bedroom faces north toward the mountain's current parking lot. An access, an access parking lot without proper barriers causes us to feel like our privacy will be infringed. In prior hearings, some residents proposed some very good points that we support in order to create an overflow parking lot. We'd like to offer suggestions in order to compromise on supporting the rezoning. One, having lights set on timers are used when the overflow parking lot is used to the satisfaction of neighboring parcels. These lights also should face downward and the type of lighting or bulb should be considered to reduce impact on surrounding parcels. Two, the overflow parking lot must be strictly for personal automobiles. Using this for idle buses or trucks and is unfair to neighboring parcels. There should also be no events or festivals held in that overflow lot. There should be no mixed usage of this lot. The lot should be locked and only open on overflow days to ensure it is not used unnecessarily. Three, create a satisfactory barrier to all neighbor parties. We have seen suggestions of evergreen year-round greenery and or fencing. We think the privacy and security should be priority. Four, maintaining, maintain open communication, intentions, and transparency between West Mountain Ownership Group and neighboring parcels. Five, concurrent to point two, these lots should not be developed in the future for anything other than parking. These zones should remain strictly for overflow parking indefinitely. There should be no mixed usage of this lot. If these can be worked out between the neighboring parties, we would support the application. We do not currently see that overflow parking is necessary. There are a handful of peak days that overflow would be preferable to parking on West Mountain. We also understand there are legitimate safety concerns if the overflow is the only alternative to make sure no one is hurt or killed on West Mountain, then it is needed. West Mountain should be allowed to thrive and residents should be allowed to enjoy the mountain as well as their privacy. We thank you for your time. This is Charles Mahoney and Megan Mahoney. Thank And that's the only two comments I have. Okay. Uh, well, we have opened the public hearing and uh, on this application, and I will remind folks uh, watching YouTube Live that if you wish to comment by telephone, uh, you, you may call us at area code 518-761-8225. Uh, um, and Laura, when the town board uh, discusses and considers a uh, zoning uh, change, Petition, there will be public comment at that point as well, right? Yes, there is. Okay, I thought so. I wanted to make sure. <coughs> uh, questions, comments, members of the planning board? I mean, I had some questions, but they're site plan related. Yeah. And, and really, most of those comments were site plan related right. as well. Yeah. Um, they don't I know really that have to do with the zone change. I seem to recall that when we discussed this uh, part of the project uh, some time ago, there were questions about lighting. 
Yeah. Uh, when the parking lot, this section of the parking lot was actually going to be used, I mean, we can go over all that again yeah. for site plan, but I know that we had concerns about that, and I, as I recall, many of them, if not all of them, were addressed. Yes. Um, so, some of those conditions that are requested are absolutely fine. Other ones are a little bit overboard, but we would ask that you get this to the town board so we can get through the zoning and we'll work out conditions with you when we get back for site right. plan. Yeah, they're really site plan issues. So uh, first we have to consider the uh, State Environmental Quality Review Act. Uh, are there any uh, of these proposed changes uh, trigger any concerns among board members for environmental impacts? They did complete the uh, assessment form. We feel comfortable with this receiving? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the first step. We have a draft resolution for seeker review in our packet. I saw it somewhere. Yep. Make a motion. Yeah, part. Um, yeah, part three. Yeah. Yep. Motion to grant a negative declaration for site plan 53-2019 Apex Capital LLC as per the resolution prepared by the staff. One, part two of the long EAF form has been reviewed and completed by the planning board. Two, part three of the long EAF is not necessary because the planning board did not identify potentially moderate to large impacts. We have a secret resolution. Do we have a second? Second it. Any discussion on secret? Uh, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Singer? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. All right, so next we consider uh, the request for the zoning change. Uh, the town board is asking us uh, much like the ZBA does when we review variances, they're asking for uh, a recommendation uh, to the town board regarding uh, our feelings about the, uh, the rezone request. They're asking to go from moderate density residential to recreation commercial for the overflow parking area. Questions, comments for the representative on that issue? Concerns? How do board members feel about the request for rezoning change? Is that something that we feel comfortable supporting? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, then I believe we have a draft resolution. Uh, again, much as we have for the CBA referral that we make in our packet. Motion for recommendation to the town board as favorable for zoning request from MDR to recreational commercial. I'll second it. Okay, we have a referral resolution uh, made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Bernie, did they close the Thanks, everybody. Well, hopefully we'll be back soon oh, to get this you finalized. Mr. Chairman? Jonathan, do you want any of these? Well, we still need uh, Mr. Chairman, you still need oh. to close the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry? You still need to close the public hearing. Oh, well, my apologies. We'll close, close the public hearing. Thank you, Laura. All right, let's see. Next on our agenda, we have uh, Penelope. Happy holidays, John. Are you staying? You gone? Have to sing or something? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Your gift or what? Yeah. Well, I was, but he usually leaves it by the door on the way out. <laughs> Next on our agenda, we have Penelope Townsend, uh, site plan 59-2020. Uh, Laura? Okay. So this applicant proposes to remove the existing garage of 573 square feet to construct a new garage of 676 square feet. Uh, this project will have a... Uh, floor area of 1,352 square feet, and, and that's due be, to having storage above. The garage height is 22 feet, and the zoning board granted that height relief. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome back. Good evening, board. Tom Hutchins on behalf of uh, owner applicant Penelope Townsend, and uh, the, our builder Doug McCall is also with us. 
Um, we were here last week, we talked about this in general. What she proposes to do is replace a, a failing 22 by 26 dimensional garage with a 26 by 26 garage, so it will, it will, it'll grow by four feet. Uh, the proposed garage will, will uh, be in essentially the same footprint. Obviously, it'll be a little bit bigger because it's four feet wider. Um, she's done a wonderful job restoring this early 1900s property. Uh, this is a parcel that a lot of people would have wanted to tear down the house and build a monster house, and she's done a really great job maintaining the architecture, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. I hope you've been there and had a chance to look at it. Uh, this garage will be matching in architecture. It'll look, look the same as the house with the shakes up high and the horizontal siding low. Um, it will be connected to the house with an open walkway out the back of the garage, which won't be visible from the road, but it will allow a, a connection to the residents. The, the, the septic system is modern. The house is buffered maybe as well as any property that, any shoreline property that I've worked on. There's, there's uh, maybe not hundreds, but there's tens and tens and tens of mature trees surrounding the property. Um, so with that, uh, uh, we'd look to your support for, for site plan, and I'll take any questions. Uh, it, were there any uh, changes to the plans uh, based on your discussion with the ZBA? No. From what we reviewed? Okay. No changes. I remember the discussion we had uh, with the applicant about the, you know, the moving uh, dishes and so on up and down the stairs. We had quite a discussion about the need for the second. Uh, there, w there is a storage area proposed above right. this garage, yes. Okay. Questions, comments from members of the board? Yeah, if she didn't get a hold of my, my mother there last week, there, <laughs> the, you know, get it. I, I do. I bought a pickup truck. Every time I go to my mother's now, I have to bring it so I can, you know, load all my stuff that she's got to get rid of. <laughs> well, Just a quick question. I know there was a lot of discussion over the height of the garage last time yes. uh, that you were here. So by the picture and on the plans, the garage doesn't exceed the height of the house as well as the garage height doesn't even come close to the uh, Correct. roof line of the Correct. house. It's still Correct. The, it's the, the uh, garage is 22 feet by by the way we measure height in Queensbury, which is great at the garage to the ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, the house is, is the house itself is 30, 30 some in the high point. Uh, the grade's a little bit lower, but no, the garage will not be nearly as high as the ridge of the house. Okay. All right, does the board feel comfortable moving forward on this? Yes. yes. All right, we have a draft resolution. I'm sorry, you need to open your public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Laura. It's going to be one of those nights. Yeah. My apologies. So we open the public hearing on this application, um, Site Plan 59-2020 for Penelope Townsend. And I'll remind the viewing public that if they wish to comment, they can call 518-761-8225. Hello? Queensbury Planning Hello. Department. Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Chris Novitsky. I was calling in for a public comment, please. Yes, you're on uh, speakerphone. Oh, great. Can you hear me, sir? We can. We all can hear you, Chris. Uh, uh, good evening, Chris Novitsky, Lake George Waterkeeper. Um, we are not really opposed to the applicant's uh, desire to enlarge the garage. We did reach out to them last week with a couple of our comments. Just wanted to follow up on that. Um, we were, we did have a request to the applicant and maybe the planning board uh, can consider the condition um, to require additional stormwater management for the existing impervious surfaces to maximize uh, stormwater management. Um, we should take this opportunity to bring the property into more compliance with the town code. We do recognize that there are a lot of mature trees, but still uh, we need, if we're gonna improve the water quality of Lake George, we need to provide stormwater management to the greatest extent practicable. Um, we did have a question on how the runoff from the garage was being conveyed to the proposed infiltration basin. Um, we see that there's a catch basin by the garage but we're not sure if it's being guttered or how the runoff is being collected and conveyed. 
Um, the existing septic system is located right off the paved area near where the construction will be, and we just wondered if that could be protected during construction with some type of fencing or uh, something along those lines. So those were, were our comments and recommendations, and um, if there are any questions, I'd be glad to take it. Yes, uh, if, I could, if I could just uh, ask, when you're, you're speaking about the uh, the beginning of your statement on the stormwater. Are you speaking about yes. uh, strengthening stormwater beyond that which is required by the town engineer for sign-off? That that is correct. We were asking they simply have to provide stormwater for the new impervious that's proposed, but there, there's a lot of impervious on the site that is not managed, to my understanding. Um, and if we could try to capture some of that, that would improve and reduce the water, stormwater runoff running towards Lake George. Okay, so all right. It, it is above and beyond. Okay. Thank you for that. Anything else? Uh, no, thanks. Okay, all right, thank you. Yep, bye-bye. Okay. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that wanted to comment on this application this evening? Are there any written comments, Laura? There are written comments. This is addressed to uh, Steve Travers. Dear sirs, we have spoken with our neighbors, the Townsend, regarding their application for a variance to rebuild their garage at 32 Bean Road to accommodate two cars and to raise the height to provide storage space above. We are in support of what is being proposed. This is Rita Witterman, and I remember someone mentioned what the, uh, Paul Witterman, I think it was. White, white. Yeah, southern neighbor, yeah. Uh, this is addressed to, uh, again, Ms. Steve Travers. We have spoken with our neighbors regarding their application for a variance to rebuild the garage to accommodate two cars and to raise the height to provide storage space above. We have no object objection to, being, to what is being proposed. And this is James David Michaels. Is that all the written comment? Correct, yes it is. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you were able to hear Mr. Novinsky's comments. Yeah, and I talked, and, and we we conversed last week. You did, I, okay. Yeah, he, his yeah. his concern, I guess, is is not uh, as much for the new proposed construction. Although he did have a question about stormwater regarding the, the garage construction. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can answer. Mm -hmm. But he he pointed out that there's pre-existing impervious uh, areas on the property, and he's wondering while you're doing all the stormwater. Could you try to address the stormwater management with regard to the pre-project pre impervious areas? And, and it, certainly, there are, there are a number of stormwater controls presently installed around the existing house, most particularly uh, with regard to some, some recent work that has been done. And, and the remainder of the site is, is very well managed naturally. There is there is not, uh, there's not a stormwater runoff issue. There's no concentrated runoff uh, emulating from this property at all. It's wooded, it's natural, it's totally vegetated. Um, so what we've done is in excess of what's required. And you know, you decide how far do you go? Do you, do you take out a bunch of those trees and put in a big stormwater basin? That really doesn't make sense to us or well, if, the applicant. If I if I understood what his his remark correctly, he, he wasn't talking about. He appreciated that apparently there was mm -hmm. a lot of vegetation there. He was talking about the impervious area, not so much the trees and so on. But right, the impervious area being being the house essentially. Um, everything down gradient from the house is a natural vegetated area with large growth growth trees. The the portions of the house that are recently constructed, there are stormwater controls. There's, there's eaves trenching and there's, okay. there's uh, splash pads and, and stone areas. So we're quite comfortable that, that it's reasonably well managed. The existing impervious is reasonably well managed and, and we are taking provisions to, to manage the new areas. Right, so I can. As required. Yeah, so I've talked to Bruce Frank, who's our co compliance officer, and this project was subject to review back in 2019. And those, uh, so Bruce is on site inspecting those changes to the renovations to the house and to the property. And part of the requirements is to have a 
certified site plan at the end, and Tom is working on that, so. I see, okay, good, thank you, Laura. Can, can I go back to you? Yeah. Last time, I had mentioned before about you guys having a conversation in the back, mm -hmm. and you, the two of you had a conversation now, and you're telling us that you had a discussion. Does he agree with what you're telling us now about that, or is there still well, I, I don't know, he said we had an email conversation, okay? Uh, following our last meeting, he sent me an email, and we corresponded with it. I shared his concerns with the owner, and uh, I mean, we're willing, we're willing to address it, um, but to, to uh, install a current stormwater control for the entire house the way we do it today, typically, to build an infiltration area, uh, we, don't feel it's, we don't feel it's necessary, and it's not required. Um, there was also, in public comment, concern raised about the uh, protecting the septic system during the construction phase. Yeah, we're very cognizant of that. Okay. Uh, the, 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 in fact, I've had the conversation with, with uh, the contractors recently that, that we have to be careful around the septic system, and we know, we know that we're fairly near it with, with our construction, and, right. and that will be a priority. Okay. okay. Other questions, comments from members of the board? You're going to be pulling that water away from the garages, you know, really that could to come on the, uh, say, the, what, the east side and the back side? East side, yeah, that, that's all going to go to the stormwater area. Okay. By pipe, wanna... I mean, we don't always like to use pipes, but in this case we have to use pipes because there's going to be a wall there. So it'll be captured and, and piped beneath the wall alongside of the garage. Uh, let's see. Did I close the public hearing? <laughs> All right. And yeah, we will close the public hearing. Uh, additional comments, questions from members of the board? You heard the discussion on the uh, stormwater and so on. Or do we feel comfortable moving forward? Yeah. Okay. We have a resolution, I think. Motion to approve site plan 59 2020, Penelope D. Towns Townsend. According to the draft resolution prepared by staff at the following, one waivers requested or granted, two, the approval is valid for one year from date of approval, applicant is responsible for requesting an extension of approval before the one year time frame has expired. Uh, if applicant has not yet applied for a building permit or commenced significant site work. Three, adherence to the items outlined in the following, I'm sorry, in the follow up letter sent with this resolution, including items A through K. We have a resolution uh, motion made. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, any discussion on the resolution? Maria, can you follow the vote for us, please? Mr. Schaefer? Uh, I will abstain. Mr. Hunziger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. You're all set. Don't Thank you, you very much. You don't want any of these, do you? Uh, no, I don't need them. <laughs> Even to wrap a couple Christmas presents with? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, board. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome. The next item on our agenda is the Bonnie Rosenberg site plan 58-2020. Laura? Okay, so this applicant proposes to construct two residential additions. The north side addition of 64 square feet is on the upper level, and the south side addition is two stories at 370 square feet with a footprint of 740 square feet. The zoning board did grant the relief for shoreline setback and the side setback and floor area. Okay, thank you. Good evening, welcome back. 
Thank you. Uh, I'm Dennis McElroy from Environmental Design, representing Bonnie and Stuart Rosenberg for this uh, application for site plan review. As uh, indicated, we have been uh, through the Zoning Board of Appeals and received the necessary relief and variances that had been requested. Now we're here for the next step in the process is the site plan review. So the project is previously discussed. This is 73 Knox Road. It's a property that uh, is toward the end of Knox Road. Uh, the Rosenbergs have owned this property for 35 years, have reached retirement, would like to live here on a permanent or a primary basis, being their primary residence. It, it proposed to make some improvements, which resulted in a couple of additions to sections of the house. The site improvements related to that physical improvements to the house involve a new wastewater system and some stormwater management as required for the new impervious areas. Uh, the wastewater system is uh, an enhanced treatment unit, an ETU. Uh, the dispersal area for that is more than 100 feet from the lake. So in that regard, it's uh, beyond what is required by regulation. Uh, the stormwater management addresses the new impervious areas and the other issue, shoreline buffer. Uh, at the referral meeting, uh, the chairman made a comment about that was something that you wanted to look at more uh, significantly. So we have actually addressed that with a, a plan and Laura asked me just to prepare the sheet. It's, it wasn't part of your original package, but something that we've addressed since then. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Good, I got it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Well, obviously, you got those pictures before Friday. It's easier for me to see them. Yeah. <laughs> see that? If you have this, though. Yes, certainly. Uh, it actually, it's the same plan sheet seven that you had in your packet. We've just supplemented the planting in certain areas on the site to be, uh, let's say, more in keeping with the buffering uh, requirements. I'd have to say from practice now, from application, that and that's a relatively new provision in the ordinance, a little over a year, and you've had experience with it already. I think that there's some inconsistencies in what it says. The practical application of it is, is, is gonna be something that you'll deal with from here on. Uh, I won't because I am really retiring. <laughs> yeah. I am retiring. I've heard rumors of that. Yeah. yeah. Well. Good for you. I, I've, it, that happened two years ago, actually. So, huh. uh, but in some cases, I've been involved with projects. The Rosenbergs happen to be neighbors and friends. <coughs> so I am assisting in that effort. That stormwater buffering or shoreline buffering provision, while well intended, is a bit inconsistent in what it's requiring. And I think that you've experienced this already might be a little uh, uh, the densities required might be a little are significant. So we've we've prepared a plan which addresses some of the additional plantings just so that it would be something that could be before you and perhaps that will be adequate and the owner certainly is uh, willing and interested to provide additional plantings in that area but even when I went through the pre-application meeting there was still a little bit of uncertainty as how to approach this 
the mathematical requirements of that ordinance? Well, the, uh, the, really the intent is the environmental protection of, of the lake. That's, that's just kind of what you keep in mind when you're thinking about numbers and calipers and all these kinds of things. I know that can get a bit into the, excuse the pun, but it gets a bit into the weeds. But the intent of it is to try to enhance the buffering to protect the, uh, the lake quality. Um, so we appreciate that you have uh, made an effort to, to address that and thank you for that additional material. Um, while we continue discussing, I want to um, also uh, open the public hearing and alert people that are watching on the YouTube channel that if they wish to comment by phone, they may do so at area code 518-761-8225. And I'll open it up for questions, comments from members of the board. No, I, I thought this was really helpful, the shoreline planning's plan. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's, um, at least in my mind, pretty much what we had talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, the, I think, the main concern, really, that I had. Yeah. Was, uh, yep. Although I should ask, were there any, in your discussion with the ZBA, did that result in any changes at all to what you discussed with us previously, other than the shoreline? Buffer? No. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'll comment. I do like the from what I see is an improvement to the shoreline, an improvement to the wastewater, and an improvement to the stormwater. Those are all wins. Yep. Very nice. That looks Police like we're department. <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, Chris Novitsky calling in with uh, public comments. Yes, go ahead. You're on speakerphone. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't want to cut off the uh, planning board member that was speaking. I apologize for the call in at that. You're getting good at this, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We're, we're, as you know, this is part of the uh, the COVID uh, procedure, so it's a little bit awkward, but we're trying to do the best we can. I, I know. I'd rather be there in, in person. You know, I went last week and couldn't get in the building. So, and I I know there's others at times that have tried to do that. So, keep me out of the building. I guess. So no. anyway. Um, Again, Chris Novitsky, Lakeshore Waterkeeper. Uh, we'd like to recommend more mitigation measures, and, and I appreciate the submission that had come in. Obviously, uh, haven't had a chance to take a look at that, but um, so some comments may be addressed. But really, for this project uh, that's located in the critical environmental area, especially in light of the recent harmful algal bloom, the property exceeds the allowable and permeable by more than 60% has steep slopes and really has no current stormwater management. Um, there's also some questions on the new septic system. We appreciate that it is an enhanced system, but it's also a fill system that is being put on steep slopes. So um, we feel that the stormwater management plan does not capture and treat all runoff from new impervious surfaces. And as it was stated, it is a minimum. I think that is supported by the town engineer letter stormwater management should be greatly expanded for the existing impervious surfaces to offset the existing impacts of runoff um, i had an on-site meeting with the applicant to discuss various options um, which would include eliminating impervious surfaces installing additional rain gardens and installing porous pavers and grass pavers um, again this project is 60 percent over impervious allowable and there's also exhibit areas of erosion. No test pits have been provided or percolation tests. I think this was noted by the town engineer as well. Um, shoreline buffer, um, according to us, failed to meet the requirements, but that's been resubmitted. Um, you know, I, I, I'm surprised about statements on inconsistencies. This was approved, went through a, a serious uh, committee process. I think it's pretty straightforward about a three-tiered approach for canopy approach for the buffer to protect the lake. Um, uh, it's really straightforward. Um, and we, we think there should be a determination on whether the uh, wastewater treatment system meets the requirements of Chapter 136. Um, unfortunately, determinations for the septic systems apparently aren't made till later in the process, but it says net built up systems, which this system is, should not be on slopes more than 
This is on 16% slopes. It says that these, there should only be absorption fields. This is an absorption bed. Um, so we just had questions on that. So uh, thank you very much. And if there's any uh, questions from the board, I'll be glad to try to, to answer them. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Anything else? Nope, no, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, do you have any comment on that public comment? <laughs> any response to that? There seemed to be some question about the uh, compatibility of the, of the waste treatment system. Well, that's really a Board of Health issue, right, Laura? It's either, it's, at this point, Dave Hatton has reviewed this and it's found to be compliant. There's obviously other review processes that need, the applicant needs to go through for the septic. Okay. But at this point, it does not need a variance on right. the phase review. But it does need review and approval, right? By the building and codes department. Right, right. Okay. Could I just add a comment about the technology involved? Sure. This is a, uh, an enhanced treatment unit or qualifies as such according to the New York State DOH. It's a pure assist sequential batch reactor. It's a little different technology than maybe you have seen. You've heard of Claris, you've heard of PEAT systems or whatever. This is the sequential batch reactor and that technology is something that's been used on a municipal level for decades. In fact, the Lake George Village treatment plant is that technology. There was a, there was a concern, um, and, and I don't want to present as knowing anything about these systems, but there was a concern voiced that something about the slope that the system was installed on. Yeah. Can you comment on that? This, this will be a cut and fill situation. Um, it's, it's something that we've uh, addressed before. Uh, it is something that the town has found to be acceptable. Laura has indicated, Dave has looked at this. You know, the challenge we face on, on some of these uh, properties around the lake is that they just, they don't fit into exact parameters of a subdivision type lot, for instance, or that. So we're dealing with trying to come up with a solution that is uh, compliant to an extent, and if not, a variance can be applied for if you're not 100 feet from the lake or if you're not distance from the property line. But uh, in this case, it's, uh, I'm not sure exactly some of Chris's comments, but um, I feel comfortable with the design that we've provided. It is, again, an enhanced treatment unit. There's another comment I saw somewhere about 30% reduction of the field size, and that's not accurate. Because it's an enhanced treatment unit, it does get a 30% credit from a conventional system, but that's the design. That's what that enhanced treatment unit earns. I'll give you a numerical example. An Elgin system is a system that's been around a lot longer around the lake. 1999 was the original Elgin system built on Cleverdale. But they're very common because they take a smaller footprint in the field area whether it's a bed or a trench. So an example of an Elgin is that if for a four bedroom design flow at a nominal uh, perk rate of 11 to 15 minutes, you require 275 feet of a conventional trench, pipe and stone, mm -hmm. 275 feet. With an Elgin unit, you require 92 feet. Now that's not a, that's 67% reduction, but that's not requesting a 
reduction of 67% of field size, that's what the design is. Right. So just like with enhanced treatment unit, you know, they only get 30% because I guess they didn't have as good a lobbyist for, you know, uh, when presenting their information. But so that field size is what it is. It's not a request for 30% uh, less. It's what the design calls for. Because again, the effluent that's produced out of the enhanced treatment unit is of higher quality than what than a conventional system. And that higher quality effluent requires less field area to put into the ground. Now, there'll be talk about phosphorus. Well, there's no standard for phosphorus reduction. There's not a residential level design or component that addresses specifically phosphorus removal to the nth degree or to 90% redu reduction as an ETU does for other parameters. The best reduction from phosphorus comes from going through the soil. So that's the, and I'll, I'll repeat what I heard today from a, a person far more educated about this than I do, than I am, but the leaves and debris that come off the trees on the shoreline produce more phosphorus than, than the properly constructed wastewater system on a site at a proper distance away from the lake. Yeah, I think that I, I think the, the, the goal is really just to try to reduce the overall amount going into the lake. That's that's basically it. Under, yep, understood. Um, can you comment? Uh, there was uh, in in public comment they spoke about um, additional stormwater, and apparently they, there were some discussions with the applicant about that. Yes. The applicant and the uh, waterkeeper. Yes. Uh, the Rosenbergs invited Chris Nowitzki to the site to discuss his thoughts about the project. They reached out to him to get some input. He provided that as he indicated. Um, what, what's on the plan is what is required for site plan review. Now that's not to say that this owner won't do other things to enhance that site other stormwater management, and there is some stormwater management on the site. Everybody just out of, uh, I often say that there's informal stormwater management because you don't want the nuisance of what results from, you know, runoff on your property. So you do certain things that would, uh, and that's happened over the years at that property. Is it to the degree of a minor project? Perhaps not, but the Rosenbergs don't have any problem with making those improvements. We just don't necessarily have them on the plan to be mandated by that approval, if you follow me. I mean, they're certainly interested in, in providing other, either other stormwater devices or a reduction of permeability, but it's not something that's shown on the plan because it's not it's not needed to show on the plan to go through this site plan approval. But it's not to say that some of that will be undertaken. Okay. Questions, comments from members of the board? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the public hearing is, is open. Would you like to address the planning board on this application? Hi. My good, evening. Name is, good evening. My name is Carol Collins. Um, I've lived at 79 um, 
Knox Road all my life. I also reside at 35 Knox Road. Uh, so I'm very familiar with this property. Um, as a lake scientist and principal founder and past chair of the Fund for Lake George, and importantly as a neighbor, I am very disappointed in this application. Bonnie and you, Stuart. Excuse me. Uh, could you? Yeah. Can you not hear me? Well, it's, it, if you speak either closer or move the mic closer, that it might be better. There we go. Maybe it's That's my hearing. But Thank you. I'm very bad at speaking. Make sure your comments are clearly on the record. Well, you're doing great. Don't worry. Just okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, Bonnie and Stewart have asked much of this town to accommodate their interests, but they have not pr appropriately proposed to mitigate the high impact of this property. Um, I, I'm going to switch my comments around just to follow up on what Dennis was speaking. And I did submit a letter, so you'll probably see that uh, I did get a, basically a determination letter or a letter from the Department of Health on this 30% rule. And I really want to be clear about this. Uh, I think it'll be it impact everything on Lake George. So at ETU, is very good at removing things that Dennis referred to as, I'm not sure, as uh, other parameters. Well, those other parameters are things like TSS, total suspended solids, and there are also things like um, biological oxygen demand, which are very important. They have nothing to do, as he said, with removal of phosphorus, okay? Um, there is some, so what, what this soil absorption field does is it's responsible for removing the phosphorus. Now, what you're saying, what the reason this was developed, this extra law in, as part of um, the 75A, was to, um, a, a, was because of nitrogenous compounds. They were satisfied that if you reduce this field by 30%, or the trench length specifically, you would get enough nit nitrogen removal. Phosphorus was not tested in New York City. It's absolutely not allowed, the reduction of trench length, because we want that soil absorption field to absorb as much phosphorus to protect the drinking water source, which is what you know the New York City is all co concerned about. This should also be our concern here with Lake George. So, I want to make that clear. I if you have any questions right now, please ask me them. But that trench length, if, we, if they were to allow at least a full-size field, I would be very satisfied with that removal. And, and we would then get, potentially, the 30% of phosphorus that's going to be generated from a very high-populated site. So. Moving on, I will say, this is a non-conforming lot on very steep slopes, and Chris mentioned that there is a 60% permeability, that the, the percent permeability on this property is 60% over code. Time constraints only allow me to state the obvious. We should eliminate one very large driveway of the two, we should eliminate a small cabin, which has to require an additional um, septic field and an additional septic tank. And, but regrettably, even with the removal of those two things, it would only alleviate half of the excess impermeable area. It would only remove 30% of what we should be removing. And, we're not getting the stormwater require, re removal that we should. So we're just seeing some new plan here. I'm not sure if it's compliant or not. But we must remember, stormwater is the major pollutant for Lake George. And two small swales that are minimally just treating this very new impervious area uh, is not acceptable. The, the planning board has the option of requiring a major stormwater plan. If any site on Lake George requires one, this would be one that I would say you should require. 
Um, the stormwater plan on steep and excessive slopes, slopes um, will remove about 60% of the phosphorus, 55%. In order to give, make this truly effective is the reason we put in these, storm, these uh, shoreline buffer plans. You can get with, an, with a compliant um, plan, you can get up to 100% more removal of phosphorus with a compliant plan along the shoreline. These are not big asks. They're getting, they're getting 854 new uh, square feet of, of building. And they're not giving up anything. And I just feel that this is a thing where we could all work together and get a really good project. We put in better stormwater, which should be approved by you first and foremost, not just presented here at the, at the thing or given a promise, but we should be able to evaluate that plan. Certainly the town engineer has asked for more information and I think we deserve to see it and evaluate it. If you could wrap up your comment. I am, here it is. Quickly, <laughs> okay. minutes. Okay, uh, so basically, I, I just wanna say given the, you know, the harmful algal bloom, it, it's a wake up call and it means we have to do a lot more um, on this site, especially in this bay. Uh, and, and protect our, the greatest resource we have in Warren County. And I do want to thank each of you for, for paying such close attention to these matters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wanted to address the planning board on this application? Yes, sir. Thank you, my name, is, my name is John Collins. I live at 35 Knox Road. I've been there for 20 years as a full-time resident. And then for the 22 years before that, I resided summers at 79 Knox Road, married to Carol. I wanna follow up on different issues that Carol raised as well as expand on one or two. This is a non-conforming property and normally when you get proposals to expand a non-conforming use, there is a very rigorous review process here. And when you look at the letters of support from the neighbors, their focus has been on put in that new septic system, make a prettier house, make space that is more desirable to you. We're, we're in favor. I'm in favor of that. That's not my problem. My problem is expanding the non-conforming use without any mitigation of the other unique factors of that property that are uh, very severe. We've talked, a number of people have talked about the grade on the property. Um, we've talked about the imperviousness of the property. If you've been there or seen the pictures, there's a lot of pavement and it's on the steep slope part of the property. Um, proposal Carol had mentioned about taking out one of the two driveways, the driveway to the north. My calculations, that's a 22% grade there. That th it's not used as the primary driveway and it's definitely not used in the winter because the car will end up in the living room of the house. Responsible ownership on this lake, when you have a challenging property like that, is to address the issues and not turn a blind eye towards it. Dennis talks about the unique factors of this property. They are unique and they are challenging. And they've been in existence since the Rosenbergs acquired the property. But now they want to expand their use. They need to do something. They need to address uh, these challenging aspects. So I've mentioned the driveway. You remove that north driveway, that's unnecessary. You, you improve the, uh, or reduce the impervious soil. You, um, uh, in addition, I am proposing, and I've written a letter on all this, I'm not regurgitating everything in the letter. Taking down the small cabin. Gee, why would I do that? Well, with this expansion, this property just went from a total of six bedrooms to seven bedrooms. That means more people. 
And when you look at the proposal, it talks about a small change in the FAR. Well, the FAR as a calculation, eco waste living space and open deck area. The living space went up by over 800 square feet. To put that in perspective, that would be like adding another of, a lar of one of those large cabins on that property. So if we were to remove that cabin, it would reduce impermeability. It would provide um, uh, alternative expansion area for the septic absorption field and keep the bedrooms at the current six bedroom rate. Now, can I ask you to finalize your remarks? Yep. Uh, the other thing, I would uh, ask that they, as a condition, there be either a restriction in the deed or a, uh, an agreement that runs with the land that prohibits the cabins from being rented. The zoning board in, in the meeting there, they had a real concern about that, but they didn't feel they had any authority over the rental of that property. The Rosenbergs have said they don't intend to rent, but we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. If, if they are to their word, they put a restriction in the deed or the agreement, then that takes the worry of everybody away that that property becomes a massive rental property which would very negatively impact the character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wanted to address the planning board on this application? I see someone. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Lorraine Ruffing, and I live at 66 Bay Parkway on Assembly Point. Um, as uh, the two previous speakers have said, the planning board is being asked to allow an expansion on a one half acre lot. Uh, which has been overdeveloped for years with a main house and two cabins. This is probably one of the most precarious properties on Assembly Point. First, there is a very steep slope. Estimates are around 16 to 19 percent coming off of Knox Road. Second, the property already exceeds the allowable uh, impermeable area by 60 percent. If the planning board agrees to the site plan, there should be a quid pro quo. At the very least, one of the two paved driveways should be eliminated. I don't believe it was mentioned before. There are two entrances to, to this house. Yes, ma'am, we've received comment on the, on the driveways and the extra cabin. So if you could give us okay. new information, we'd appreciate that. Okay, well, um, I, uh, lastly, I guess I'd like to engage in a bit of nostalgia. This is the first place that my family summered on Lake George. And at that time, we rented the main house and the owners remained in the two cabins uh, in back. The bay in front was ideal for small children. Sadly, today that bay is in very poor shape with excessive algal growth and <clears throat> a very muddy bottom compared to the previous sandy bottom. It's a perfect hatching spot for Habs. Therefore, it's critical that the uh, pervious area be increased and the stormwater runoff mitigated, and a robust buffer is called for. So I ask that you request two conditions. Eliminate one of the steep driveways and install a very robust shoreline buffer. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wanted to address? Yes, sir. I see a hand up. And sir, before you begin, if I could just um, point out, we've received a lot of uh, public comment on the, the driveways and the extra cabin and so on. If you could give us new information rather than repeat information that's already been provided, we would appreciate that. Thank you. My name, well, new information, first of all, my name is Stuart Rosenberg, my wife Bonnie and I. Very happy to be here tonight. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, staff. Um, Bonnie and I purchased this camp in 1985. It was a lifelong dream. We've been there for 35 years. Uh, we love it. I still get excited when I drive down one of those driveways. Um, and we intend to basically make it our retirement place. Uh, we want to change it from a camp. Sir, could you hold, speak closer to the mic or speak? We like to kind of expand it from a camp to a home with a larger bedroom, larger kitchen and eating area. Um, I realize there's a lot of challenges to this. 
The two driveways are one, one for entrance and one for exit, and they're steep, and taking away one driveway, um, one is very circuitous, would not allow any trucks to come down for construction per se, and the other is kind of a, a very steep driveway, straight down, allowing access to the camp. So those driveways, they were there when we bought it, we've used them throughout. For about five years, when they constructed next to us, uh, you may be remembering the property, uh, at 67 Knox Road, uh, the first developers closed the driveway. Uh, they blocked it off from us, and we had a difficult time exiting our house from the driveway because the carriage of my car would hit the, the road as we came by. So it's really helpful for us to have the two driveways. My wife comes from a family of three wonderful sisters. The sisters use the cabins in the summer. We don't rent them out. We have no intentions of renting them out. It's not what we're here for. You've always asked, what have we done? Well, I have taken an active role in planting trees. We've planted over a dozen trees on the property since we first bought it. Um, we've improved one of the best rock gardens in Assembly Point. Uh, every spring I hand out dahlias to all my neighbors. So I really believe in improving the property and continuing it as a showpiece of Lake George. Uh, I, I asked, uh, the Lake Mr. Navinsky to come give me some ideas, and he was kind enough to visit with us for an hour, uh, telling me how we could improve the drainage, how we can improve the impervious areas, and I intend to do it. We'll use, we'll use the permeable pavers on the flat areas. We'll put in catch basins by the driveway. We have a lot of ideas how to make the, the property compliant and would healthy. You be willing to, would you be willing to add those to your plan? Yeah, sure. So that we have an idea of, sure. of exactly what you have in mind. Sure. Be and happy. then you could be given a period of time during which you could actually have that done. I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. Okay. Anyway. Can you can you tell me again what you were uh, proposing? Uh, you're talking about putting... In all, in all the flat surfaces, and there are a number of flat surfaces, but by the cabins, down by the house, rather than the blacktop, which is impervious, obviously, we would add the grass, I don't know what you call them, the grass tiles, pavers. Okay. That allow permeation, okay? So removing the blacktop. We, we intend to remove as much blacktop as I could possibly remove. Obviously for the steep areas, we can't. But in the flat areas, we would remove the blacktop. I don't like it as well as anyone else. Um, what else? By the base of the steeper driveway, we would put a catch basin there. I've stepped out in the rain. I know where the runoff is. I know where the problem is, and I know how to correct it. And, and I will take it upon myself to do that. And we can include it in plans. I think uh, Chris has already included it. Dennis has already included it in plans, but we'll develop it even further if you require. So again, our intentions are to respect the lake as we've done for the last 35 years. And so I you would be willing to modify uh, your application to reflect some uh, another catch basin for stormwater management, uh, re reduction of the uh, impermeable uh, blacktop, to convert that to a permeable paver type? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Well, we want to make it work and we want to make it we healthy. Can, we can uh, discuss it with your representative, yeah. I guess. But okay. We appreciate that. It does, it does seem, it, and it sounds as though you recognize that it is a challenging piece of property. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, been developed over many years, in some cases prior to the higher standards for stormwater and so on that we've developed. Uh, but we have often found with applicants, and it sounds like you may be one of them, that when you're undergoing these types of renovations and, and developing uh, new changes to the, to the property, it's the best time to, to do it properly. And you know what you have done, and, and uh, you worked with environmental design to uh, improve somewhat the shoreline buffering, that, that's good. Uh, but it does sound as though there is a lot of concern, uh, predating concern, perhaps predating when you even own the property, about the stormwater issue. And I'm sure you're well aware, living in the area, of the, the concern, the recent concern with the uh, toxic algae bloom, although I guess it turned out perhaps not to be toxic, but in any case, that's a, a developing problem that we're very, very concerned about, and that's why we, we have uh, traditionally made an effort to, to focus on the buffering, to focus on the stormwater management. Uh, so we appreciate that very much. All right. I, I share your concerns and I will do those changes. Anything else? 
Thank you very much for being here. I have here. one question. Sure. If that's all right, Mr. Chairman. Sure. No, that's fine. Would you be uh, willing to entertain us removing one of the wooden cabins? <laughs> that's a heartfelt question. Heartfelt because we have a wonderful family and the family visits us every summer. Three sisters who are as closer than you can ever be close from California, Toronto, Montreal, and Albany. And how would I judge what sister to throw out of a cabin? <laughs> you know, it just, it just, it's very, very difficult to us to consider removing a cabin uh, because we, we don't use it a lot. We use it in the summer for relatives. We use it occasionally on weekends for my daughter who then gives us our grandchildren and they stay up in the cabin. And, uh, One of the effects, I think, with the with the additional uh, cabin is the is again the impermeable. So if you're willing to, to do more with the stormwater management, that's going to mitigate not removing one of those cabins. I, I think. And, and believe me, that would be my priority. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much for hearing us, and have a very peaceful, happy, healthy holiday. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that wanted to address the planning board on this application? Oh. I do have some written comment. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'll start with, this is addressed to Mr. Brown. Please include this letter to the director of the public hearing for both area variance and site plan review applications for the Rosenberg property at 73 Knox Road. I, represent, I am representing my family property at 103 Knox Road and as nearby neighbors, I would like to offer our support for the improvements proposed by their applications. I am aware of the variances required in the house modification suggested. During their 35 years of ownership of their lakefront property in our common bay area, we have known the Rosbergs to be considerate and conscientious neighbors and lake users. Their property and its use is certainly in keeping with the character of the neighborhood and would continue to be. The improvements proposed will not be in detriment to our neighborhood and the infrastructure upgrades to wastewater and stormwater systems will only have a beneficial effect on the lake. Thank you for consideration of my comments and know that we are in favor of the approval of the proposed improvements. This is Chris Winslow, 103 Knox Road. It's addressed to, to Craig, we are writing in this letter in support of the Rosenberg's application for variances at 73 Knox Road. We are summer residents of 79 Rock, Knox Road, immediately next door neighbor and, and to the north of the Rosenbergs. The Rosenbergs have always been good neighbors and good stewards of the lake. The setback variance from the shoreline that they are requesting is necessitated because of the longstanding location of the main house. As you are aware, this is not an uncommon and there is no real way to resolve the setback. It is very positive that they are not proposing to encroach upon the existing setback from the lake at all. In fact, they are increasing the setback from Lake George by three feet with a modification to their deck that they are proposing. We believe that the modest expansion of their house that they are proposing is in keeping with the character of our neighborhood and will not be detrimental to nearby properties. We could not be more pleased with their determination to replace their wastewater system with a moderate, modern state-of-the-art system and to improve stormwater control. As a trustee of the Fund for Lake George, I have been personally involved with the efforts of the Fund for Lake George to stimulate the replacement of aging septic systems and the improvement of stormwater controls to protect the water quality of Lake George. As you are aware, the Fund has made significant investments in the town of Queensbury to support septic upgrades. We recommend the Rosenbergs for their stewardship, commend the Rosenbergs for their stewardship regarding wastewater and stormwater control and encourage approval of these variances to support these upgrades. This is Tom and Renee West, and that's 79 Knox Road. This is addressed to Craig. My name is Stephen Ballas, and I own the property at 67 Knox Road in Queensbury. I'm an immediate abutter to the south of 73 Knox Road. I'm writing this email in support of the variances being proposed in the Rosenberg application. I feel the proposal is keeping with the character of the neighborhood and will not be detrimental to the neighbor neighborhood or nearby properties. Further, that they are upgrading to the state-of-the-art wastewater and stormwater runoff mitigation system that will improve and enhance our beautiful lake. Thank you for attention to this matter. Stephen Ballast, and that's at 67 Knox Road. With address to Mr. Brown, I'm writing this letter in support of the Rosenberg's application of her variances at 73 Knox Road. These improvements are number one, in keeping with the character of our neighborhood, two, not detrimental to our neighborhood or nearby properties, three, including the addition of modern state of the art wastewater system and stormwater runoff mitigation system that would improve and enhance our beautiful lake. 
Uh, thank you for your attention to this matter. This is Ralph and Louise Allers at 105 Knox Road. This is addressed to Mr. Brown. This letter is in the support of the setback variance requested by the Rosenberg family at 73 Knox Road. I have no objection to any of the requested variances. As a somewhat distant neighbor, the property line setbacks do not impact us directly, but some reasonable, given the totality of the project and existing structures, where there, where there are immediate neighbors with a similar request, I would support the plan. Regarding the waste and stormwater systems, I'm wholeheartedly in support of this plan. Upgrading of an on-site system for existing structures should be encouraged and supported by neighbors in the town, even if reasonable variances are required. The benefit from upgrades more than offsets any encroachment in the setback zones in the proposal. In summary, I recommend approval of this application. This is David Wilcox. This is 26 Forest Road. This is, my name is Bob Glandon. I live at 63 Knox Road. I'm writing this letter in support of the project application by Bonnie Rosbernberg at 73 Knox Road. The requested variances will allow a currently small house to be more usable by adding interior space to the current rather small bedrooms and kitchen. Additionally, with these proposed changes, a new modern septic system will be installed, which will be beneficial for the lake. Additions called out for stormwater mitigation are also beneficial. And this is from Bob Glandon. And then, and then just to confirm, um, Dr. Collins and John Collins both wrote letters. I could read those into the, into the record if you chose to. And then Kristen Vixie read his letter into the record. So. Okay, thank you, Lord. That's all I have. Do you want me to read those or? Uh, it, I think they're largely the same as the public comment that was made. I believe so, that's that, up to them. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Lorraine Carbonine, and I'm a Could you speak up or, or speak closer to the mic, please? Yes, my name is Lorraine Carbonine, and I'm a resident of Assembly Point Road. As an Assembly Point resident, I seem to be surrounded by a parade of variance requests. When a variance, can I take this off? No. Yes. yes. When a variance request or multiple requests are made for an already non-conforming lot, which many of us do have, I feel we're often pushing the envelope for lake health. Um, when looking at the use of the structures on a property, I do not believe decisions based on occasional occupancy can ever be accepted. Um, I think we heard that there will be seven total bedrooms on the property, but some are only used occasionally. A property must be f able to fully manage the wastewater based on the existing number of bedrooms and not how often those rooms are planned to be used. I can personally attest to the value of this. One pandemic later, my occasional use home is now the home to a family of four for the past nine months. I think we're so fortunate to have heard input from our Lake George waterkeeper, certainly an expert on the issues facing our lake and how we might mitigate any negative effects of this project. Installation of the new septic system is key, but there are other critical steps to help balance the excess coverage on this lot to manage runoff, which our waterkeeper discussed. While we can stir in a lot of emotion into supporting a project, I think we all know that it is the environmental science which will help preserve our lake. And I ask you to listen to the facts and suggestions of the experts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask again, is there anyone else in the audience that wanted to address the planning board on this project? Okay. Yeah, if we can just have you wipe down the podium for us. Oh, yeah, all right, thank you. Oh, and then flip your mask back on. I am always cleaning. So. Uh, you can come back to the, uh, the mic when she's done, Mr. McElroy. Remember to get your mask back up too for us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right, so a good deal of public comment, uh, as you're aware. Um, I think, and, and in a way you began your discussion by, by speaking about the Rosenberg's interest and intent in improving uh, the stormwater management on the property, and Mr. Rosenberg graciously agreed to make that a part of this uh, project, uh, recognizing that it was, it was important, and in and, and doing all of this site work, it's now is the time to, to do it. Um, he spoke about Permeville pavers replacing blacktop and an additional catch basin for stormwater. Uh, I know he's not, you're the engineer, um, but uh, can you make those improvements? Yes, and we've talked about uh, devices like that right from the onset of the project, the okay. design of the project. Uh, the difference between what's required and what might be suggested and desired by the owner. I would say strongly, there's no one that understands the peculiarities, the difficulties, the benefit of that property than the Rosenbergs. They're there, that's their home. They understand the issues with it. They've addressed certain things uh, regarding stormwater, just as any property owner will try to take care of any of those nuisance issues. So I don't want it, thought about that this is that they've led a blind eye to the difficulty no he was very clear what he intended to do i think for us it would be uh what we would like to see is have these specific measures based on your recommendation and he suggested a couple of things right that obviously the engineering has to be involved but uh because of the high permeability of the property if we do some additional stormwater and have that a part of the plan I if, think that that would that's be that's the preference of the board, certainly we can add that to a plan. And my question might be though, how will that be structured as far as this, or, we, or will we be tabled for that further So I mean, the application or? has to go before the town engineer. I mean, there's no, at this point in time, there were comments provided by the town engineer. And as such, um, you know, those those items have to be addressed. And that, that again is up to the board whether they wish to table the application or do a condition. And, that's and, and let me just add to that because that's an important point that we didn't discuss. Chasen has reviewed this. They've issued their comment letter, which we've responded to, but the timing of it isn't such that we've gotten their comments back. But their comments are truly minor. I've done this enough to know that, you know, Chazen will generally give plenty of comments about a project. In this case, there were nine numbered items, and I'll respond to something, John, you said the other night at a meeting where there were 21 comments. Well, be familiar with what each of those numbered items are. They're not all comments requiring some mm -hmm. response. Some are just statements of, right. of recognition of certain conditions. So in our case, we've got nine comments and six of them really are comments and, and one of them related to uh, test pits, which mm -hmm. Chris brought up, but that's been done and that's been provided. Um, a comment about a silk fence detail. Uh, you know, so we're, I think, in real good shape as far as Chazen's comments on the plan before you. But if, if it's the preference of the board to provide some other stormwater devices, and they would take the form of perhaps either grass block pavers, depending on the location, or permeable block pavers, which get a credit for permeability from the town, but also provide a stormwater management device, or Stuart mentioned a catch basin, but that would then be a dry well, perhaps, or maybe a rain garden type device. We've well, talked. I think that, that's those recommendations probably would. would I mean, they would. They wouldn't come from us. They would come from you. Yes, definitely. Uh, but the applicant has indicated that uh, he recognizes the need for additional stormwater and supports doing that at this point. So I think what we would be looking for, and I guess I'd, I'd reach out to other members of the board. 
how people feel about uh, the application as it stands. Do we want to see the uh, additional stormwater engineering come back on the plan as was suggested by Mr. Rosenberg or how do we feel about proceeding with this application? I'd rather see something that comes back to us that addresses a lot of the comments on both sides. Either the, the owner, that what he's willing to do, and then also get on some of the concerns that were addressed by public comment. Okay. Uh, we heard a lot of comments, and so far we've only talked about stormwater. But a lot of the comments that we heard had to do with a non-conforming application that was being suggested that additional square footage be added. Uh, I'm sorry, are you talking about the septic? No, no. I'm talking about the bar. Bar. It's already that, over the recommended square footage for the property. That was granted by the variant, though. I was going to say, that was... Yeah, they, they requested the Zoning Board of Appeals look at that variance, and they did so and approved, gave, granted them a variance for the I'm just order. articulating the, some of the comments we heard tonight. I, I don't know why we should ignore them. We also have an application that has a seven bedroom, two septic systems on a less than half acre lot that slopes 30 feet from the road down to the lake. And I have heartburn about that kind of a situation. You, between FAR, two septic systems, three buildings, seven bedrooms, uh, it seems to me we just well the, the the buildings and at least one of the septic systems uh, predates this application that we have before us. It's not something they're proposing uh, to build. It's a pre-existing, in effect, a pre-existing non-conforming structure. And what they're what they're doing is they're making modifications to a pre-existing non-conforming lot. Um, and my own feeling is that is why I think. The uh, my thought is the best way to address it at this stage is to uh, try to, to deal with the stormwater, perhaps reduce the impermeability uh, to try to get it more compliant. And this is a situation that, as you as you know, we face with a lot of properties around the lake that are that date back to the you know last century, and uh, many of them are non-conforming and. We try to improve them when, we, when, when granted an opportunity. In this case, we have the owner who recognizes and intends to address more of the stormwater issue um, and felt that and agreed with my suggestion that let's let's deal with that now while all this other work is, is going. So, um, but that's just me. I, I don't know how other members of the board feel about that. I, I agree with Mike. I, I think, you know, based on the comments that we've heard this evening, that we're, um, we would really, we would be remiss if we didn't have, ask for a table and, and uh, look at more stormwater, more information, yep. okay. uh, rather than just say, uh, approve it subject to the engineer's approval, because it sounds like um, we need to look beyond what is being called for in the code in this specific case because of the unique features and characteristics of the site. So, right. Um, I, I, so, I think I would agree with Mike that we should we should okay. table it and ask for more information. How do you how do you feel? I agree with Chris. Okay. I think Chris said it very succinctly. Okay. I like that language. So Laura, it sounds as though. Um, well, Looking for some. <laughs> yeah. I like chop liver tonight. <laughs> Don't I stand out already? Well, I asked for comments. And well, no, I was letting Jamie go first. I thought you were going to go Mike and go this way. By all means. Yes, Mike. It just, I just got all discombobulated. Now I have to say, uh, this is a very unique project, and and I have to agree with with Mike and, and Chris, um, and even and, and Steve, in saying that you know. Uh, the Rosenbergs, they, they bought this property like that. They've been, enhanced, been enhancing it going along. Uh, you know, I look at it, you know, when I first looked at it last Tuesday, I'm like, oh, well, you know, that's not really, that's really not um, a big addition, you know? 
It, it looks, it, it is, it's very small and moderate, but then, um, you know, I, I look at this picture and, and I saw, you know, what was up above and everything else, and, but I really didn't, it, it did, I don't know why it didn't dawn on me that it was like on a half an acre lot. Um, but, and then tonight you hear, you know, 60% impermeability, uh, ability, and we're trying to, so. No, it's 60% above. above. Ob, 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 oh, over and above, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, um, I, I, this is the time that I think that we, we need to uh, to address it. And, and I would really, uh, you know, I kind of brought up maybe removing one of the, uh, uh, the bedrooms, one of the cabins, and really uh, buffering up the, uh, that shoreline, it, it is steep. I mean, I understand I've, I've been on some of the driveways that I've been down and yeah, sometimes it's easier to come in and go out and you know, this is gonna be a give and take um, and, and try to be compliant and, and move uh, everything toward the direction. I'm, I, and I've said it before in other meetings, you know, these, these big homes that come out to these small lots, on, especially on the lake, even though we're enhancing systems and we're increasing and our septics are getting better and, 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 and we, we're doing better with our stormwater collection, but uh, especially when you've got a, a low, low bay area and, and I know uh, uh, the Collinses are you know, always out there yakking and, and, and taking samples and, and thank you very much because we, we need to monitor this. It's very close and, and this is the time to do it. So. Um, but that's only just my opinion. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. I'll throw my two cents in there too, since Brad's over there. So, one, I did like the improvements that are happening. After listening to everybody, I think we can do better. Um, I'd also like to think outside the box. So there's the two cabins, and I, have the, I know the recommendation is to tear one down. No, Would there no. be any possibility of disconnecting uh, all plumbing and everything from one of the cabins, so thereby it would never be able to be rented out in the future, but act as a guest house. So I'm not telling you that that's what needs to be done. I'm throwing out some suggestions, and yeah, I'd like to see some ideas come back, because Mr. Rosenberg, I thought that was very um, thoughtful of him to offer removing uh, the blacktop and all the flat areas, but now we need to define what those flat areas are. And I think that's the important part that everybody's bringing. Yeah, up. we need we need the engineering really for that. But I do think it should be noted um, and appreciated by the board that Mr. Rosenberg um, very graciously recognized uh, that more needed to be done and documented. Um, yes. So yes. that that's very much appreciated uh, by everybody that, that loves Lake George and, and by this board. So. Um, so Laura, uh, in terms of, of procedure, uh, we're looking for a, additional site plans that revise site plans to include a, a, a greater amount of uh, stormwater, essentially to come closer into compliance um, with the permeability. So I would I would word it. Um or use language that is, is updating the stormwater management on the site. Um, and that would be referred to the town engineer at this point. I, I, okay. Um, just for comment, I don't, again, they're. So just leave it general, just updating the right. st stormwater? Yep, yeah, because there's also details that they provided that the sometimes the lawn uh, uh, fixtures that are could be considered a different calculation um, where right. it could be given uh, more credit than a permeable paver. Uh, okay. I've seen that discussed in our office, so I think that that sort of discussion may give greater um, permeability on the site, but that really is something that needs to be presented and, and discussed. Okay, and I hate to make more work for you because I know you're already very busy, but I would urge that the applicant uh, uh, communicate with you, take advantage of your expertise to, to get guidance as this process goes forward uh, in terms of, uh, you know, developing those plans and mm -hmm. presenting them. Right. So at this point, I would th if you were gonna table it, I would table it to a February meeting. Okay. Can, can I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the force main, and knowing that we've got, there's a, 
roughly a 16% slope on that northern side, that the force main end, the four inch, is underneath the paved area. Is there, is, is that, is it safe with that, with that being a traffic area? Yes, yeah, and the, the uh, pipe can be uh, installed to a depth that's certainly acceptable for traffic rating and in terms of it being under the paved area, it's, we always design these systems so there's a drain back. So it's not like subject to freezing that force main line. It would be every time the pump finishes its cycle, the content of the force main would drain back. There's not a check valve that would keep that force I'm main charge. The force main would not have to go as, as low as the four inch pipe, is that right? As a force main? And I'm just, uh, because you're into that slope. No. Correct, my but they prob they could be installed in the same trench if they're, if it's okay. compatible there. Or without or if inverts it's on here, working with the force main, I didn't know, did you look, is there enough cover on those? Certainly, yeah. Is that 16? Oh, that the 16? Laura, do you have a preference or a suggestion as to which meeting in February based on the? I would do the first meeting, which is February 16th. February 16th. It is, and that's a Tuesday in February. I don't know what the Rosenberg schedule might be, but uh, that is the uh, school vacation week, right? I, I believe I, that's correct. I'm pretty sure that's correct. We, we should know that it's only two days after Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. Right. But the, but Which the is Sunday, though. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. 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 So the opportunity exists if the applicant cannot point? make that 16th <laughs> meeting, that the they would know they would know by the January 15th submittal, and if that was the case, they would request an additional table. So that that I'm just putting it out there so that's understood. And then I just want to identify placement onto the 23rd. You could be tabled to the 23rd if that worked out. Yeah. Okay. So. So I just want to identify with the stormwater and going back to the engineer is that again, this is potentially in addition to above and beyond what's required. So it's more, it's not the comments that may come back for that may not yeah. be um, a requirement. So just re right. remember that, that, that is, these are comments that are, um, yes, this is may, means appropriate or maybe this is, there may be something additional information needed um, okay. But it's not it's not part of our code to ask ask for something additional above it. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to do a table motion, and we're going to require that the applicant uh, provide the state of stormwater management plan, or is that just additional stormwater management in response to public comment and recommendations of the water people? Well, we have this plan this evening. Um, for discussion. We didn't really talk about that specifically, uh, but the new plan will have this included. So, well, I mean, do you think that should be reviewed? And I mean, remember, we're we're sixty percent above. So whatever we can. Yeah, do. I understand, and the applicant understands that. Um, you know, I can't really comment on this because I haven't really had it. I've had right. something else to do since I was handed this. So I haven't uh, really looked at it, but I'm sure that the applicant is aware that, um, and we had pointed out to the applicant in the previous meeting that the shoreline buffering was one of our main concerns because of that. So uh, I'll leave it to the, the applicant's engineer to place this along with the other enhancements on the uh, stormwater plan and we'll see that when we get it. Well, I was going to ask him to see if he could, you know, in, you know, my comments, like I said, this is the time to do it. So this was 60% above, maybe. Well, this is what he's, I believe is what they're proposing. Maybe we can bump it up a little bit more. Well, That's certainly what I'm asking. provide that advice. I, I mean, I we have, have, a, we have a lot up the hill, you know, and it, and it's, it's, everything's downhill. So, you know, all we could do, uh, and, and I'm not trying, this is a give and take, and this is really an overdeveloped lot. So the more we can put back in, and if Mr. Rosenberg, as he stated, you know, is, is you know, the true steward that he wants to be, then I, that's what I'd like to see, so. 
Okay, well, I'm sure he'll take that into account. All right, thank you. Yep, so we have a, a tabling motion. Yep, and we'll give it a shot here. Motion to table site plan 58-2020 Bonnie Rosenberg to the February 16th, 2021 planning board meeting with the applicant to provide updated storm water management plan in response to public comment. That would be February 23rd. No, uh, that's an alternate date. In oh, case I'm sorry. Can't. I just I'll second it. So as part of your discussion, I apologize for not interjecting earlier, but with public comment, are you still gonna, are you gonna leave the public hearing open? Yes, we will leave the public hearing open because we're tabling the application. Yeah. I should, yeah, I'll, I'll state that now for the record. The public hearing will remain open on this application because we are tabling. Sir, is there any question, any opportunity to ask two clarifying questions that I think would be there, helpful to you as well? There will be when the application, when we see the updated application. Uh, okay. One of the two questions might be for creativity on how to solve some of the issues. All right, I, I'm going to have to ask you to come up on the mic, sir, um, in order to make sure your comments are on the record. Thank you very much. John Collins. Um, so one of the proposals I had was in, if the cabin wasn't taken down, whether you could put a deed restriction or an agreement running with the property not to rent the cabins out in lieu of disconnecting plumbing. That way the family could continue to use all the three yeah, I, on the property. I'm not, I'm not certain that, I don't know if we can. I don't think you could place a deed restriction on potential future use of a, a piece of property. But well, with a non, uh, I, I'm not so sure about that because we have a non-conforming property here that they're asking to make more non-conforming and talk about give and take, that could be a potential to Thank you for those Me comments. Too. And when Thank they you. return in February, you'll be able to make more comments. Thank uh, you. I, I would just add that uh, the applicant has uh, taken a lot of public comment tonight and has agreed to make it more conforming. And we'll see to what extent it's more conforming when they return in February. I think we need to give them an opportunity to go back and uh, you know, update their plans, resubmit them, we'll look at them. There will be an opportunity, continued opportunity for more public comment. Um, at that time, and let's see what they come up with. Thank you. I'm sorry. So you made the, so did you complete the motion? He did. did. Yeah, we had a second. I had a second. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. So any other comment on the motion? Yes, John. The way it's written now, it's limited to only stormwater changes. Do we want to? They can make, those are what we're requiring. They can make whatever changes they want. All right. Any other comment? All right, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Ms. White? Yes. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. All right, thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is under new business, and the item is Luxury Box LLC, Site Plan 54-2020. Laura? So this applicant proposes to install seven separate buildings connected by a covered walkway and a facade feature at 4,685 square feet. Project includes site work, grading, stormwater management, lighting, landscaping, and connection to municipal water and sewer. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Eric Sambloom with Shota Rivers Associates. Um, I'm the engineer on the project, and uh, in the audience also is... I guess I don't have to point him out because he's the only one left, uh, <laughs> David Brindle uh, from uh, Luxury Box uh, LLC. Um, so what is proposed, it's a uh, currently undeveloped lot on uh, Route 9. Um, it's right across from, uh, I think it's called the Fun Spot. There's a brewery, uh, Northway. Northway right Brewer. There. Yeah, Northway yeah. across the street <laughs> from there. Uh, okay, so people know, know what that is. Um, <laughs> Uh, as as, as I being a home brewer myself, but uh, um, it's so it's in a, uh, uh, a, a, a you know commercial area where uh, other recreational facilities are. This happens to be a commercial recreational facility that is proposed. Uh, there, the seven individual buildings will serve as individual 
um, gaming stations, um, so to speak. So it'll be like a virtual um, uh, gaming type of experience, uh, you know, like virtual golf or virtual uh, football. And, uh, David, come up later if you've got specific questions about I that. I just interrupt just for just a moment. So I do know Mr. Brindle, so, so for disclosure, I don't see any complications or conflicts. Because you know him? Well, I'm, I'm friends. Uh, we're not close <laughs> friends. I'm not over at his house every day, but uh, <laughs> okay. uh, maybe once a year we'll, I'll go over there. Okay. So it's up to the board's discretion. Well, I, well, it's up to you. Yeah, I mean, you, you have disclosed what you feel is a potential conflict of interest. Uh, it's up to you whether you abstain or not, but, but disclosing, uh, I don't think it's a disqualifying conflict of interest that you're merely acquainted with someone, but that really is, that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see any need to recuse myself. You know, fortunately or unfortunately in Queensbury, we know a lot of people. And that's right. That's kind of how it goes sometimes. You don't have any financial interest in his no. Project. There you go. No, yeah. and he probably doesn't even realize until tonight that I'm even on the board. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I have, well, thank I you have for no sharing. No problem with any application because I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> huh. All right. So we clarified that. So if you could, I must say, when I saw this application, I thought it was one of the more interesting projects that I've seen in a while. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. I was trying to think of, of an experience, perhaps, that I had to try to visualize what it was that you were designing and, and, and developing. And I did participate, actually, with the, uh, the Lake George Rotary Club. Uh, we got together one, uh, I guess it, was on, it must have been on a weekend. And we went to a, a, a similar uh, small space in Lake George Village that was like a, a mystery type thing. So you, you all got locked in this room basically and there were clues around. And it was a very small space. And you know you had to look for these clues and figure out, solve a puzzle basically. It was really quite, it's a little different than what you're about, the same concept is that you're, you're going into a space and now you're transformed into a, 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 an unusual environment. It's a, it's a very clever idea. Yeah, it certainly has a lot of potential. Um, yeah. And uh, so because of the, the, the seven you know, separate buildings, the, the construction of them is gonna be unique as well. Um, they're gonna be um, essentially built off site and, and then transported on wheels. Um, and uh, so uh, it's kind of hard to just de describe um, without the structural drawings, but um, essentially there'll, there'll be a, 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 a wooden walkway that is used to connect all the buildings to, to walk from one building to the next. There'll be a retaining wall under that, um, and then the building itself will then be set, you know, at the lower level, um, at the low end of the retaining wall, and the and the walkway will be on the top of the retaining wall, so to speak. So, the way that the uh, uh, property is um, kind of divided there with that walkway, um, so the the left side of the property, the the north end, will be you know at, at pretty close to existing grade. Um, it'll be a little bit lower than on the other opposite side of the uh, of buildings. Um, and so that, that posed some, some definite challenges from an engineering standpoint on how to grade the site, uh, but we figured it out. Um, essentially, um, we'll, we'll basically split the uh, flows from uh, the impervious surfaces to flow on either side of the property and flow up vegetated channels, each to two separate um, four bays, and then they would those two four bays would, f would flow into one um, infiltration basin. And uh, we're proposing to treat all the stormwater on site. Uh, we're not requesting any variances um, in that regard. Um, the uh, uh, site itself is, um, it, it currently all drains and infiltrates. It's very uh, favorable conditions for an infiltration project or for, for, for stormwater infiltration. Uh, it's very deep to groundwater. Um, it's coarse sand at the site. Um, so, so, so that'll work very well um, to ensure that the stormwater is treated from the site. Um, from a uh, layout and traffic circulation standpoint, there's an existing curb cut there now and a little bit of pavement. And the plan is to reuse all of that. Um, the existing opening, the, the main, uh, or the, the curb cut, is uh, 21.75 feet wide, which is slightly less than what the code requires, what the Queensbury uh, zoning requirements are for, for a, a two-way access. So for now, we have represented it as a one-way um, access um, 
thank you, Laura, um, with uh, just a one-way in, and then the property to the north, um, it would adjoin that property, and uh, David has spoken to that owner, and, and they're agreeable to having the, the sites connect. So that'll, that'll improve the, the traffic circulation in the site. Um, we think that it would be acceptable for that existing curb cut to, to actually be two-way. It can work as just a one-way in, and then the, um, you know, to exit the property, you'd have to go uh, through the property to the north. Um, uh, but uh, we wanted to just make sure that we, we could absolutely meet standards, um, and if the board you know, felt like we should hold it to that, we will. Um, if it can be used as a two-way, we think that would be acceptable. Um, and it would just DOT add to offer for more flexibility. I'm sorry? Have you talked to DOT about a curb cut permit? No, we haven't. Uh, we're just talking about reusing the one that's there now. We're not making any changes to it. Uh, but that's going to be their decision, though, so you probably should make contact with them. If you have an existing one, does it meet their standards now for commercial driveway entrances? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it would be good to get some kind of acknowledgement. We, we can, I, I'll be happy to reach out to, um, to the DOT um, regional office on that to get their opinion. Um, my understanding is that, is that a, a permit would not be required for not making a change, that's a physical that, change. That's a sort of a, um, uh, in discussion amongst ourselves, that's something that is an agreement that people usually have. Yep. They have their standards that require a permit. Sure. Um, I, I do know that the uh, commercial driveway entrance uh, DOT is quite a bit, it's, uh, the allowance is to be quite a bit wider than what's there now, um, which certainly isn't, isn't necessary for this type of a use. Um, and it just, it just helps control the access management um, onto the site. Um, it, this has been looked at by the fire marshal. Um, the, the only significant comment there was to make sure that the surfaces are um, substantial enough for um, fire, for emergency vehicles because hmm. um, what is proposed there now is a gravel surface um, for now um, uh, it could be upgraded to asphalt in the future um, so the uh, the request from the fire marshal was to either make it uh, uh, I think the word was hard surface so I would take that to be an asphalt type of material um, or to do compaction testing of the uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to come up with a compaction uh, rate test form so they can see the com compaction rate of the uh, your ground underneath, you know. Exactly, that, that's service. what was requested. Um, and I, I mean, I can tell you with the really excellent sand that's there now and the um, sub-base material that's be specified in our design drawings, there's, there's no concerns about the ability to provide adequate support uh, for emergency vehicles there, uh, you know, whether compaction testing is, is done or not, um, as long as it's placed properly. Um, but, uh, but that's something that, that uh, the applicant's willing to do if needed. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how hard it is, you know. Um, you're a pretty big guy, you can probably go over there and jump up and down in front of Mr. <laughs> Palmer and you'd say that's enough, but I don't know. I, yeah, yeah I, haven't, I haven't tested that one yet, but uh, <laughs> it's a good suggestion. Um, I guess, let's see, other aspects. Uh, I've uh, covered, um, you know, traffic circulation, parking uh, uh, meets uh, standards a little bit more. Um, we thought about snow removal, uh, made sure that we kept enough room on the on, uh, side of the uh, um, parking that's pr pr uh, proposed here. Um, there's a, a dumpster enclosure identified, although it's not believed that this is a, a site that's going to generate very much trash at all. Um, and uh, the, and there's a landscaping plan as well, um, which uh, uh, we believe meets the um, uh, landscaping standards for the town. Um, and uh, the, it provided with that are you know, actual pictures of the um, species that are proposed as well as a, a schedule. There are, um, there, 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 uh, uh, David would like to, uh, at, maintain as much of the existing trees that are there as possible. Um, it is going to require, you know, clearing most of the lot, but um, there's an opportunity to maintain a lot of the, the trees that are right on the edge of the property. Um, there is a 50-foot buffer requirement. Excuse me? There is a 50-foot buffer requirement to the residential zone? Correct. Um, we understand that, and uh, 
that is uh, a, a bit of a challenge for us. So what has been proposed is the construction of a fence on that um, uh, south east corner, I believe it is. Um, if you look at C103, the landscaping plan, it shows the extent of the fence. And then, um, you know, there's also to maintain those trees there. But then also if you look at the uh, uh, C102, which is the grading plan, that shows the, um, uh, yeah, that's what, I'm just trying to see what's up on the screen right now. I think that's uh, 103. Or that's the, the, um, the layout plan. At, at any rate, the um, uh, C102 is the, the grading, grading plan, and that shows the uh, infiltration basin that's going to be located there. Um, and so that space is really needed um, for that. It'll all be, um, you know, it'll be green. It'll be green, you know, um, uh, surface. Um, and then to also maintain the trees that are currently on that property line or on that corner, and then also add uh, the fence um, in order to, um, you know, compensate for the um, removal of any vegetation within that buffer. The, there, there is one comment that we got from, uh, from, from Laura on the lighting plan that um, what was proposed was just slightly under the recommended two and a half foot candles. Um, and so we actually had prepared a revised lighting plan to meet that requirement. But then it was also suggested that you know, since it's just under that, um, that the board may consider that providing you know, adequate lighting for security, but you no, know, yep. making sure it's not excessive. Yeah, um, we can so discuss that. Sure. I think we would. Um, I, I think that. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, David, but I believe that it would, it would, it would be in the interest um, to maintain the original proposal that was submitted if it's acceptable mm -hmm. to the board. Okay. Anything else? I believe that's it. We did get re uh, comments from the town engineer on the uh, stormwater management plan. There were two pretty minor comments. One was uh, we forgot to show the um, stabilized construction entrance on our um, erosion control plan, which that has been corrected, and we submitted that. And the other was um, that they wanted to see what um, yeah, us to include the watershed outside of the, just the, the boundaries of the property, but they, they don't extend outside the boundaries of the property. There is no stormwater that currently flows onto the property from off-site. So, so we are treating everything that's, that, that would actually be flowing into these stormwater treatment practices. Um, and I don't know if uh, Chazen's responded to that or if they will or... They will, but they, they, the idea is that the board gets that first flush of information and then um, if the board feels it's necessary, sometimes it's a condition to obtain that sign-off or if the board wishes to table that until the sign-off has is, is occurred. So okay. it, and it's up to the board. Okay, our, our hope is that those are minor enough that uh, we don't need to table for, for that item. Yeah, it's um, the sign-off from the town engineer is, is typically a condition of approval in any case. Okay. So if you don't feel that you have any difficulty in complying with uh, the request that the town engineer has provided you, yep. then you're probably comfortable, but we'll see what the board says. Okay, yeah, we, we submitted our response to, um, back to the town at least, uh, almost two weeks ago. So okay. we feel comfortable that we can comply with that. Did you mail it? We emailed it. Oh, hey, that's quicker. <laughs> Stay away from the mail right now. <laughs> so I just want to identify there was a question about signage and there was information within the application that it was to be ground lights. And as um, the board's aware and maybe not the applicant is that we, you need to have downcast fixtures. There's no up lighting uh, allowed in the town code unless you go for a variant. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I forgot to mention that, so thank you very much. Um, and in my discussion with David, that's that's fine. He'll, he'll change that so that it's downcast at the sign. Yeah. We, we try to reduce light pollution to the extent that we can. So. Of course. Um, and we will be having a public comment on this application as well. And 
Uh, with the unusual circumstances of the COVID pandemic, I want to alert the viewing public that if you wish to comment on this application by phone, you may do so uh, at the following number, and that would be area code 518-761-8225. And I'll open it up for questions, comments from members of the planning board. Are we allowed to ask like AD-related questions? Economic development, or do we have to stick? I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't well, hear. I just have a lot of questions. Economic development, more related. Like currently, this type of entertainment you can't even open right now. All these types of businesses are closed during COVID. So, you know, what is your time frame for opening? Do you have any kind of plan for, for the, am I allowed to ask that? You can, you can um, generate questions that relate to um, hours of operation, uh, phased okay. planning, when that starts, um, whether the, the uh, project is successful monetarily is not typically something the board yeah, has. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. You also have a year from a theoretical approval. Yeah, that have one year, year to start okay. construction. All right, yeah. no, I'm just, I just have some concerns that are more business related. So I'll keep now, them I'm, to myself. I'm just the engineer, but you know, we're all living through this COVID stuff. And exactly. I can tell you these yeah. are individual buildings for, for individual parties. So from, at least from a safety standpoint, there's a lot of potential there for this to be a safe activity. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but like I said, I'm, that, that's not my, my <coughs> area. I'm so so that's how the buildings would function and... is like a group of people would just go into one building. I, so, I kind of envisioned that it was like different game rooms or something. You know? it, yeah, so, so that first building uh, on the, uh, the uh, further uh, down that's to the west is, is like the office. Right, and whatever. Yep, I understood that. You know, people would, yeah. would move to another building to play their game, but David's offered to give you his vision where he's, he's the businessman here yeah. and the owner. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, I'm happy if, to if step aside saying. and give him the podium. Sure, sure. That, that would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind, let me go out to my truck and grab a beer there, and then I can uh, listen to this and uh, be relaxed. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> How are you? David Brindle. So to answer that question first, and I'll get back to the other question. So from all my research that I've come up with, there's nothing that's precluding me from opening because it is a small unit. So you're not getting 30 or 40 people in there. The maximum is six people. So I haven't found anything. If you find something, I'd be more than willing to look at it, but uh, I've not My found anything. My issue is I'm currently doing lending for the, under the CARES Act, and there are several businesses who fully anticipated they would be able to open, and they have not been able to open. And they're, you know, under similar type, you know, small rooms, games, they thought they were safe, thought they did everything they needed to and they were not have not been allowed to open so I, you know it's just like i said my research doesn't show that there's anything that's stopping it so. <laughs> yeah and we're looking at something in the future not something in the past okay. too which makes it different yeah yeah so hours of operation you said so i'll answer that question okay. so it's nine to nine seven days a week um that's for the general public i'm also going to have it where you could become a member and members would have 24 hour access to it, huh. uh, but it's only a limited amount of people. So it's not like we're gonna let everybody become a member and have 24 hour access. Um, Interesting. What's that? I, I do have a question. So yeah. as far as the color schemes go, what we see in the rendering, is that the colors that are being proposed? I think the, I've changed it a little bit from the blue to more of like a, a, a neutral kind of khaki kind of color. So it's not, and it's probably going to be clapboard, not cedar shingles. Uh, is that something that we would want to review or see the color schemes before approval? Well, it's, it's, we don't always have the benefit of color renderings, but we, we do often discuss, uh, you know, certainly the visual impact and so on, and how it fits with the character of the commercial area that it's located in is entirely appropriate. Mm -hmm. And then the only other question I'm going to throw at you is, have you considered any charging stations for electric vehicles as everybody is starting to transition? Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but there is a transition to electric vehicles. Are you looking at any charge stations to add? Uh, to be honest, I never gave it a thought. I mean, I, I do notice that they're putting them in 
malls, places well, of recreation. Typically, people with money have electric cars, and they're shopping. Their uh, Route 9 just put in uh, several electric charging stations. I would add, too, that uh, the town of Queensbury occasionally does get grant funding for uh, electric charging stations. So I would say, at this point, if you even would consider that, if you would just advise the town that should the town be looking for a site to install a charging that you would be open to doing that, mm -hmm. and then they could reach out to you if, if they get to that point. Yeah, no, no. That would be one way to handle it. Yeah, fine with me. I'm sorry, what was your question? I, do, I forget, we, I oh. think you asked it earlier. Yeah. Yes, sir. My question? I don't see the other question. No number. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more yeah. thing. Yeah. Your oh. application talks about the portability of these different unique buildings. Mm -hmm. Could you explain how that would work and under what circumstances? So uh, the structures are made on a trailer. So huh. they fold up and they sit on a trailer that's eight and a half feet wide. I mean, some of them are 35 feet long, but most of them are 20 feet long. So they are legal limit, they can go down the road. So the, the design of the product is that it can go off site. More than likely, those are not gonna go off site. They're, they're probably gonna stay there, but it does have that functionality to move off site. So if somebody wants to rent it for a month at a restaurant, let's say, then we could bring it to a restaurant for a month and, and rent it to them. Or a state fair or county fair or whatever. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But, yeah. but if we do that, it's more likely that's gonna be something that I'll keep off premises and we'll deliver it to them. Well, so. uh, um, my question was, what, what, did, what are you doing on the site? Oh, that's right. Yeah. What are the buildings? What do, you, what do you do in the buildings? So it, it has, it's not quite virtual. Uh -huh. uh, basically, have you ever played golf on a simulator? Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what it is. Okay. So mine is a little bit different than everybody else's. It's, you can play golf but I have a lot more variety, a lot more different software that people can use, okay. that they can work on their game, they can have fun with their kids, things like that. So is it all golf? It's not all golf. Okay. So you, got, you can play golf there, you can play other sports, okay. you can play baseball, hockey, soccer, um, uh, foot golf, mm -hmm. frisbee, bowling. So there's different activities mm -hmm. like that. I've got a shooting simulator that's in there, so people can go in there and do hunting, skeet shooting, mm -hmm. things like that. So it's kind of like a, uh, you know, like a PlayStation Wii type thing that you can, but much, uh, what a, yeah. my gosh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, uh, so it's all real golf balls, baseballs, hockey pucks. So you're actually using the equipment, so it's not like a Wii system, so. Oh, well, yeah, no, I, I can see that because um, I know it, like, you know, when. When you used to be able to go out like bogeys, you know, I'm, I'm always interested to watch them, you know, play on the screen there, and it's just amazing in the crack of the ball, and you know, and, and then you sit there and watch it, and, you know, and then you you see them like, oh, you know, oh, that one hooked, it, it, it really, it's amazing. Yeah. And, but when you see them go straight, when you do, it's really uh, this uh, virtual um, uh, gaming now is just uh, what a great, and then you can pull the units out. And transport if you need them. So, yeah. I mean, obviously you're going to have them on a, a slab and then tie downs and that. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. <clears throat> exactly. So the the other thing is the screen is 16 feet wide, nine feet tall. So you've got basically a movie theater. So we'll also have seats in there, like movie theater movie theater seats. So if somebody wants to log on to Netflix, then they can watch movies, or if they want to watch a sporting event. Things like that. So it's not just, it's more entertainment is what it is. That's how I look at it. It's not just playing sports. So like if I wanted to go there, I would rent one of these buildings for so many hours mm -hmm. or a day or whatever. If your wife told you to leave the house for a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Go watch a movie there instead. Yeah, okay. yeah That's exactly. Why I don't understand. I don't get it. I'm thinking the other thing I thought about is, okay, what about a blockbuster syndrome? Then? When the whole concept of blockbuster going to rent movies fades away, Hacienda's got a business that just dies out. Yeah. And I'm just thinking this, again, this has nothing to do with approval stuff, but I'm interested the same way Jamie's looking at it. I'm going, what happens when it dies out and people don't, do, don't go to this visual aspect of sport entertainment? Change the software. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't want to get into a, the, the business side of it, but no. I get what you're saying. But it, I mean, you go to bowling alleys. They've been around for umpteen years, and, and people use it as entertainment. They're not professional bowlers. So that's what this is. This it's is more just entertainment. Rummaging around in my head as you're going through it, I'm sort of thinking about, like I said, it has nothing to do with the site plan or anything. It's just, it's just an interesting thing. That's all. Do you game with your gan your uh, grandchildren? No. Well, obviously, you're going to have to start that this year. You'll, you'll see. You'll get into it. <laughs> so I do have a public comment. Since he's up there, I might as well read it in case you have can mm -hmm. respond to some of the questions. Yep, we did open the public hearing. I haven't gotten any phone calls, uh, but are there written comments? There is. So this is there's one in here. So this is addressed to Mr. Traver and the planning board members. As owner of 14 and 16 Twickwood Lane, I have deep concerns regarding the proposed commercial development of the tax map 296.9-1-13. I understand commercial brings more to Queensbury's coffers than residential, but must it be at the expense of residential areas? I have owned my home since April of 1973 and seen many changes through the years beginning in the mid-1980s due primarily to substantial clearing of mature trees and underbrush after townwide rezoning. The concept of clearing trees and grading on this subject property is distressing. My property, as do most homes backing along Route 9 on Twickwood Lane, sits on a ridge. The proposed clearing on this project is likely to allow noise and light pollution. There is no fence nor plantings, nor new plantings that can replace 60-foot oaks, maples, and dense underbrush. They help absorb noise and deflect on or block light. I bring the before the town planning board six issues. One, I request the board require the applicant leave all vegetation to the rear of these prop proposed new buildings and relocate the stormwater management system to the front of the building under a permeable surfaced parking lot. Two, the proposed lighting by this applicant looks to have exposed bulbs on the back side facing our neighborhood. Please require a different type of lighting which would not allow light to spill into our backyard. This time of year when leaves are off the trees, it is pr particularly problematic. Three, if you allow clearing on this property for rear property drainage, I request the applicant be required to construct an eight to 12 foot high dense cement retaining wall, not wood or metal, and built in such a manner six foot tall. Uh, she, and I apologize, I'm gonna mess this up. The pronunciation is Thua Green giant arborvitae trees are to be planted at this height, not ground level. Please require Thua evergreens. Initially, there are more costly, but they are resistant against damage from deer which reside in these woods. Stipulation also needs to be included requiring that any property owner present or future will maintain this barrier. Four, construction of these buildings need to be built in such a manner that they are soundproof. Previous experience involving noise issues from an entertainment business along Route 9 took years of battling with the town and owner to resolve. Let's prevent that. Five, and any type of external public address system or music speakers is to be banned. And uh, six, lastly, restricted hours of operation should be included and stipulate the business will not be open earlier than 8 a.m. or later than 10 p.m. And this is from Linda McNulty. Thank you, Laura. Uh, I don't see anyone in the audience that wants to comment in person, and we have received no phone calls. We've heard written comments, so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, let's see. The comments were hours of operation. You've addressed that, 9 to 9, which falls, uh, complies with the one concern that was mentioned about 8 and 10. Mm -hmm. uh, will you be turning off the lighting at 9 o'clock at night when you close? I mean, it, it, I... I Honestly, didn't I, I was probably going to just put them on lights for dust at dawn, but uh, I mean, oh, okay. I mean, we could turn them off when we leave. I uh, just see a security well, just, issue. If, if they're on all night, you can imagine that if there's someone that has a home nearby, that light is going to be on all night long. It would be. Yeah, I'll address that. I mean, can you pull up the lighting? Well, you're going to have the covered porch, you know, walkway, right? Yeah, so they're not going to see the light. They're going to be up in the soffit. So, um, and you know, and it does go to a hill in the back. So I guess my concern is, I mean, I know we have, there is some uh, land back in there um, and you basically butt up pretty much to a uh, furniture house. And I know it's kind of an odd shape because when we uh, 
subdivided uh, there for the furniture house. We got we got that bootleg over there yeah. for him there to, to get the green space. So, um, you know, I I see the point of what we if there's anything we could do with the well drained soils and that to keep that buffer along that you know that back wall is as, as challenging as it may be. If that's something you can do. Now, <clears throat> what I what I do first the light they wouldn't really see any light because where they are is up here and where the light is is down here. So for the chances of them having light in there is small. Now I do have the fence going along the residential side, but I also have another section of it going like 10 or 15 feet back. Uh, it's not the whole length of the property, but there is something. And how high is that fence? Are you? Uh, well, Town says it's got to be six feet. So, okay. I mean, if, so if you're requesting not, something so different, then I can look yeah. at that. I was going to say fences are reviewable by the the planning board, so in commercial zones. So if you're proposing something higher than six feet, that's reviewable by the planning board. So it'd be something that the board could could discuss, but um, it may be something that needs to be presented to the board. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm over for suggestions. I mean, it's a uh, if it's got to be eight foot, then I'll make it eight foot. I mean, I, 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 I prefer not to go much higher than eight feet just because I've got a commercial building in Kingsbury and I dealt with, they made me put up a 10 foot fence and it keeps falling down because of the wind. So. Build it better. <laughs> yeah, I've That's tried. a big fence. <laughs> it is a big fence. That's, yeah. That's a big sale. Yeah. Your, so. your buildings are only 12 feet tall. Correct. So, I mean, a six foot fence is going to block half the building. Um, yeah, and they're, and you oh, they're, set, they're loud, set down in. They're set yeah. down. Yep. And, and, there, and you do have that buffer right on the south side from the, the furniture house behind it. Yeah, but then. Yeah. But that's the furniture house buffer, too. So we right. can't count that no, buffer. No, no, I'm not counting. I'm just buffer. saying that. He's just noting the, the woods are still yeah. there, you know? Yeah, and I am keeping the trees as many trees as I can because I can't impede on the stormwater in that back corner. I believe there was six trees that were gonna be saved. Yeah, along the side there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the lighting plan, I don't have any issues specific to the lighting. It's, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, but what's concerning me is you're you're leaving them on the sides there. The people that are complaining are in the back, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know if your engineer can hop up here so we can drill him just as hard as you. <laughs> no problem. Well, you can stay up together. I'm sure yeah. you guys have talked together. Okay. If you feel comfortable, I'm not telling you what to do. Just yeah. play nice this up is, there. This, this is fine. This works. And I can project my voice so I don't have to crowd over the microphone. But, I, you know, it, what, what can we do? Because, I, I, you know, it's, it's always been a concern along there. And, uh, uh, you know, I just... Um, we grew up on the back side of that, or I did over on Greenwood, uh, uh, way back at the back side. And we, you know, I know Trickwood, and, and I know all about the noise, the go karts and that, and you know, uh, the Suttons and Dream House, and you know, the, and and I'm not against growth. I, I like the growth. Um, so whatever we can do to help maintain, because I, I know you do get a lot of reflection off of Route Nine. The, the car noise, the go-karts, the, you know, um, you know now now with the Northern Brewery across the street there, you know, all the hooping and hollering going on, uh, you know, when you used to be able to do that. But, uh, so if there's anything we can do to uh, to mediate that, because you, you really are going right to that back one, and, you know, we have buffer zones in for the reason, and it, it is, um, <coughs> Well, it is kind of tight what you're doing here. Certainly, and, and, and I, I, I do have to reiterate that thinking that that fence is going to do an awful lot to, to help up with that, but so are the buildings themselves. You know, uh, where the lighting is going to be in the, in the um, uh, uh, mostly the parking area, you know, the buildings are between that and the residential area. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and also I guess there was a, a mention about noise and um, you know th these are the, the activities are, are to be um, 
conducted indoors. Um, so the buildings themselves should uh, do an awful lot to mitigate that. Um, the, I did, I, there was a suggestion about f flipping the drainage um, with the, uh, uh, the uh, having the stormwater at the, the front of the site. Um, and that, that would be a significant challenge from a grading standpoint. Uh, we would basically, you know, it, it would be ex exceptionally costly and much more environmentally impactful, I think, to raise up that site in order to, to push the stormwater the other way. I mean, yeah, what we I generally try to do is maintain existing drainage patterns, and that's what we're doing here. Um, so from a stormwater environmental standpoint, you know, um, I, you know, I have to say that, that, what, that what really what we're proposing is the best solution. Um, other potential mitigating factors could be to, you know, modify the, the landscaping plan a little bit, you know, um, and maybe consider uh, different types of plantings in that buffer area. Now, we can't, we can't go in the infiltration basin or the four base, for instance, but um, there can be plantings um, allocated to the edges of those. I mean, I know you can get large shrubs, you know. Um, I mean, we always talk about, you know, six-footers, but, uh, you know, you take a six-footer in the ball and you put it in the ground, you end up with a four-foot tree, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so when I try to say, I say, well, I'd like to see an eight-footer or a 10-footer, you know, but, um, but I know they do sell some robust, you know, green trees if, you know, if, depending on, you know, on your clearing in the back, if you can fill that in, you know, uh, beyond the fence, um, you know, so you'll have your fence, uh, so, you know, and an eight, I don't have a problem with eight foot high fence, um, uh, you know, just to, because that, there's still, you still have that right away path there that's next to you there that, uh, for Dan Mull, uh, Mullins there, um, yep. that, that is a, that actually is a residential um, a hunt there. So uh, I think it's a, a great project, and um, you know whatever you can do to uh, to increase that uh, the, the, the buffer in that back would be great. And I understand about the you know the movement of the water, and but I, I like I said I know that area and I, I know the sands, and you're spot on. So. So I guess, um, you know, once again, we think we are mitigating that but with the fence and the, the, the placement of the, the way that the buildings are situated and that. Um, and then, so one additional thing that's been discussed here is, is maybe increasing that fence to eight feet. Um, and, you know, the only other thing I can think of is we can talk about the landscaping. Yeah, I mean, we can put some and, other and if, if plants in there, put an eight foot fence up and... They're just different, different you know, yep. maybe taking some of the species that are pre presented and rearranging them or, um, you know, potentially going with something that's going to be more of a screen. Yeah, I think those suggestions would definitely help. Are there any mature trees that can be kept on the, I guess it would be more towards the northwest? That's, uh, not that, really. Yeah, not the that's, northwest. It's really on the sides mm -hmm. because towards the back is where it thins out. Okay. So it's something that they're tiny. There's really nothing back there. Well, and you already said you really can't put trees in your sediment basins. Correct. So. You're only dealing right. with a one acre site. Yeah. Yep. All right, well those improvements I think uh, make quite a difference. So one of the things you talked about was the, the egress and access out front. And um, I mean, we actually have it in the code to encourage uh, cross lot access. Yes. So, you know, that's a good thing. Yep. Um, but we haven't really talked about the, other than uh, Mike's comment about what DOT might say about the width of your driveway. Um, but, you know, I think we should talk about it. And, I don't have strong feelings I mean, one if, way or another. If, you know, uh, and, and perhaps that's an oversight on my part, but you know, obviously, if DOT is going to require a permit, a permit's going to have to be obtained. Mm -hmm. um, now we have coordinated with uh, water and sewer. Um, we got some comments back there. I didn't mention that before. Um, there is a, a manhole already. Uh, there's an easement that, that's right in front of the property there, and there's a manhole right there. So the plan is, is to tie into that. But then for the water, um, water is just off the curb. 
and so that is in the DOT right away. So in order to make the water connection, that will all, will require a DOT mm -hmm. permit, but the town obtains those permits. Okay. Um, and um, it, it, it's, it's actually a requirement for the town to do the work and, and obtain that permit mm -hmm. for that. So there will be some some DOT coordination on that aspect, so they will be looking at the parcel, but we'll, we'll right after this, you know, tomorrow, I'll have to contact um, the, uh, the office up in Warrensburg and uh, you know, just make sure that they're aware of the project ahead of time to see if they have any comments on that uh, existing curb cut and just being you know, used as a commercial um, access. Mm -hmm. I've just found that some of them, uh, if the driveway is not used for a while or a change in use, that they say no, you got to. There may not be a permit for that one already on record, and that's what they're going to say. Yeah, I you know. I, yep, I, I've experienced that too, and I've also, um, you know, been in situations just like this where they're like, you know, as long as if, if we're not touching it, um, you know, they don't require a permit. The minute we have to touch it, all of a sudden they want us to completely redesign it, and <laughs> analyze all of our stormwater yeah. flows, and mm -hmm. yep. you know, all of that. So, so your well, your first. Um, your first drive, your, I'm sorry, parking stall on the left as you go in, is that going to be problematic with people coming into the site from that driveway? It shouldn't be. There's quite a bit of room. Um, if, if you see that, that, you know, how much space there is from that parking space to, you know, across the rest of that, that lot right there, actually. Um, I brought it. I might as well use it. Right, this area right here. There's, there's, there's really, you know, so for a vehicle to come in here, there's, there's plenty of room for, for making maneuver maneuvers um, in, in the property that way. Have you seen John drive? Uh, <laughs> I, I, nevertheless, but by most standards, I think that there's plenty of room there. Yeah. Okay. It's got to be 60 feet. It is. It is. It's about 60 right. feet. And oh, excuse me. Um, that's just, oh, that's a oh, nature. Call of, my lawyer. Let, hang on, let me call my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's purely a nature of uh, you know the site and, 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 and the way it turns out. Um, it didn't need to be made that wide, but um, just given um, the layout of the, the buildings and um, you know to get to maintain parking and, and more importantly to maintain that cross connection with the neighboring um, parcel. No, and I really appreciate you uh, reaching out and asking the neighbor. I think, uh, like I said, uh, Chris stated this, and, and I know we're always happy to see a, a share like that. Uh, we just did that right down there with Uno's in the subway. It uh, it really um, makes it work, you know, work out nice and keeps our curb cuts down. So. Yep. Right, and it keeps the traffic from just one access, you know, more distributed. Mr. Chairman, what I'm hearing, the fence that's denoted as six foot is going to become an eight foot fence mm -hmm. is a requirement? Yep. That is a board field. Uh, we've, the applicants offered some uh, additional buffering, the fence a little taller. I think we've addressed most of the public comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the board feel comfortable moving forward? Yep. Do we want to uh, detail the buffering or we're just taking the buffering as it is and just noting the fence? Well, they mentioned the fence and some additional plantings, I think. Yeah. So can I, so that if you look on the plans, the fence is only a portion of that back corner? Oh, right. So is the, is the opportunity exists that maybe the board is requesting the entire property line or are you just looking at the, as it, as it is proposed? And then I just want to step back to the drive aisle entrance. So this is maybe a, another additional discussion with the town in reference to we require a 20 foot um, for two way access. It's typically to access a parking stall. I don't know, and I'd have to look a little bit deeper if we require a, a width um, for a two way access point. Um, I just know that to access the uh, parking stall, it has to be 24 feet to have two-way, in which that's something that you addressed. But I don't think we ultimately discussed whether the entrance area needs to be 24 feet, and I don't, I don't have an answer to that at the moment. Okay. Well, I mean, the entrance is like 60 feet. 
No, I mean the width, the width, the, oh, the actual physical oh, width of the um, curb cut. Oh, you're talking there, right? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So that's 21.75, and um, the width is 21.75. Okay. I mean, I can tell you as far as the travel way goes. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen um, highways on the national highway grid with nine foot lanes. That's not ideal. I'm not saying that. <laughs> That's it, but, but but you can function. That's my point. You can sure. Function. Right. And so that that's why I the think it, it, and with the twenty the, now now the standard of twenty four foot width that is that is very standard across many many jurisdictions. If you're going to have perpendicular parking, that you have a, a for two way traffic that it be a twenty four foot width. And that's not necessarily what's happening right here. This is just the access onto the property. What we would be talking about is twenty four like up here the travel area and, yeah. or or here, and, and we do have one. We have at least 24 feet in both of those scenarios. Right. Um, so, um, if uh, I guess from from an engineering standpoint, we think it would be acceptable for that to be a two-way entrance. Um, but just after you're going to be part. you're going to be having discussions with DOT anyway. True. And uh, if you uh, present that you're going to be in compliance with what they require, I think that's uh, acceptable to us. Okay. Anything else from members of the board? So I think we need to be clear, though, on the, where the buffer is required. Because clearly it's not required in the back. It's only required on the side, right? It's required where it adjoins residential, pro like re how the residential property, and as, as I pointed out, um, or Brad pointed out, it's kind of a, kind of a strange lot system here. Um, it, a lot of L's. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of L's. So this lot is residential. Um, this lot is is not, and this lot is not. This lot is. So he's only proposing that corner uh, to be. But it's just that flag-shaped lot that is residential, correct? Correct. Right. Which well, right. actually, not it's, the, it's not just the flag-shaped lot. It's this. Um, let's see if I can do this. It would be this lot as well. This, these three lots. But he's not adjacent to that lot. There's property between them. Yeah, but he's but he's still within 50 feet of that lot. So the flag lot and the lot that. Well, so that's precisely why the fence is proposed to wrap around that corner. Right, and that's what I'm just saying. I'm not. Offer from those residential properties. Right, which is fine. I just wanted to, if the. I just wanted to clarify for the record that we had the conversation exactly yeah. what it was that was required so yeah. that it would be on the record and so we would all understand that that's. So that, no, can, this spot right there, can that be built? Can no, that be cleared at any point in no, time? No, that, that lot behind is, yeah. was his, his dream house. That's connected yeah. to the dream house, right. yeah. so I, which was part of so the that commercial. Like, right, so that's commercial. No, that's commercial. At the moment, I believe, and I'd have to look back at the condition, I think that was to be left uh, the way it's presented here, but it doesn't mean that an applicant couldn't come back in that's and change that, so. But that's, a, that's in any property, that's not just here. So are we still looking for additional buffer plantings in the north, what is it, the north east corner? And if so, what type and how many? Well, he's leaving a lot of trees along that side, but you're talking up there in that corner. I mean, if they can leave as many trees as they can all the way up there, I don't have a problem with the... Yeah, because that's, that's far away. Your, uh, your retention bin kind of goes across like this, right? Yeah, there's a swale that goes so, through. That. I mean, you can leave more trees there, correct? I think the point is that there aren't really many existing trees there right now. Well, at the picture, it looks like there's something there, you know? Yeah. Mm. There's no, uh, is there any setback requirements between the buildings or just from the property lines? Just between the property and the residential property. 
Right, so that's a discussion with building and codes and I don't, um, I, I believe they've already discussed some of this aspects with building and codes and that didn't come across to me as be, they hadn't, didn't approach me and say there's an issue with um, building uh, distance. The only thing was it's 25 feet from the side lot, which is plenty there, and it has to be five feet. The buildings have to be five feet apart. Five stay on. Okay. And that you, that satisfies like ISO standards for insurance and stuff. Like that? Just satisfied <laughs> So I don't know. That's what he said. It has to be for building. Code. So we got the fence, we got the south entrance uh, is to be reviewed by DOT. Yep. Um, but I'm still confused on the buffer as far as are we asking for additional clampings of what type or are we leaving it? Are we looking for? Uh, well, let's ask the board. Are we asking them for additional uh, plantings or fencing? You coming how far across over there? On the... So it's not, it, I don't think the fence, oh yeah, here we go. So the fence, it goes off the page down here, up to here, and then it ends right about there. Yeah, I think, yeah a little less than that. I think it was only about 15 feet or so I was coming off the back side. Well, it looks like you got one, two, three, four, and you're missing the fifth post at the end. You just got your fence dangling out. Okay, that, that's that's my fault. That's, that's our drafting. I apologize. <laughs> now that's why your fence keeps falling down over there in Kingsbury. You don't have enough posts. Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy because that protects the, the, uh, the residential zone. And then if we could get plantings right along from that edge of that plant, you know, across, um, you know, of some substance that would put up, the, you know, that berm and, you know, and high enough, you know, that they're, they're but that's up. the stormwater area. You're talking about in here? I'm, I'm talking between the stormwater, in between, no, the stormwater is down where the dotted line is. That's it's tapered awesome. in, right? So this, this is a sediment forming. Right. And then this is the infiltration basin. This so, is the so, basin. so above the dotted lines between that the small dots and the big dots. So this little space here between the top of the four bay and the yeah. property line, there is a there's small one over there. All right, how much do you think? I think that's about five feet. So you, you could put a nice bump of maybe, you know, 100 or so big headlocks. <laughs> about a bunch of Merry there Christmas! <laughs> Um, that might be easier to just extend the yeah. fence. I mean, you want me to just put the fence all the way across? I mean, I'm willing to do that. that. All right, if, if that, if, you know, hey, if that's... That would be easier and maintenance would be better. The, 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 well, I'm happy with that, you know, I'm, okay. everybody else is. That's, that so, works. You got just make sure your engineer you puts a few more posts in there. I'm sorry, what? I'm saying there's, you already have vegetation existing on the other side of the property. Right, right. And a slope going right. All right, so extending that would be the uh, northeast northeast border. Anything else? Can you go over some of the items that you were discussing that you may put into the conditions? You want me to? Yeah, go right ahead. So we're talking about the fence noted on the site plan to be eight feet versus six feet as shown on drawing detail number C-501. And, and extend it. Right? And extend across entire northeast border. That was one okay. of them. The second one is the south entrance currently uh, denoted as 21.75 feet wide is to be reviewed by DOT. So I looked up the town code. Yeah. Town code says, and this is under parking and loading regulations. Right, that's, that's where I got the. <laughs> Each parking space shall be reached by an access driveway at least 24 feet clear in width for two-way traffic, 
for 12 feet clear in width for one-way traffic. And they're making a provision for a connection to the other lot, so they're saying a one-way traffic. Well, they're saying it could be one-way traffic. Right. So the, I think the question is, is whether that entrance could be a two-way right. point. Yeah. And so I think that's, you, you want an answer from DOT of whether that could potentially be a two-way. Well, it sounds like it wouldn't be acceptable to town code is what I'm suggesting. Right, so that may come back and be a variance request to the town yeah. code. But I, again, that's, if DOT is controlling that, I'm not, I don't know who has supersedes. I thought we just make it one way and the two way is on the other side. Well, and that's fine. fine. That's, that's, that's the way you presented it. Cross that's how that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I presented it. I like that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. All right, so yeah. it's just going to be a one way. One way in? One way, one okay. way in or one way out? One way in. One, one way in. One way in. in. One way out, right? Who did that song? The Almond Brothers? Almond Brothers. Sure, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, there you go. Right, so I don't, so I'm not quite certain if it requires our, it's the planning board to say that it needs, it needs DOT review um, because it would be subject to a regular, because we don't have control over their conversations with DOT unless. Well, I, I would like to, you know, just make sure that we have a, uh, a that we know that DOT is cool with it and that way it doesn't hold you up, you know? Okay. If DOT says it's okay for two-way, is that okay with the board? Well, well no, then you have to come back for a variance. Yeah. I mean, we could just make it one way and don't even have to worry He's going with all. one way. Okay. Don't even talk two-way right okay. now. Right. Okay, so the south entrance that's currently there is uh, the one-way entrance and one way in. DOT approval. Right. All right. That sounds good. Okay. Yep, I, think I don't see any reason why they wouldn't approve, approve it if it's just one way. Right. There's plenty of width. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything else or are we ready for that, to hear that resolution? Well, um, it's a, the seekers first. Uh, then the, can I, so the other item was to confirm that you wanted the original lighting plan and not the um, fire one. Alternate, alternate one. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> so our original proposal had the, the just under two and a half yeah. candles, um, and we can't prepare with another one. But uh, our, you know, if the board's okay with it, we'd like to stick with the original proposal. It's slightly under the recommendation of two and a half foot candles, but we feel it's adequate to provide enough security, and um, you know, at least it keeps the the brightness down. A little so one of the things that lighting plans never show is the existing background lighting. And Route 9 is lit, so. And you got Cumberland Farms right there. You got Cumberland yeah. Farms right there. Yeah, I would there. rather have it lower than. Yeah. So, uh, and, and when you look at the actual plan, um, e even though it doesn't meet the minimums, yep. the average mid, um, where the lighting is needed, they have it. It's, Three and four, it's not two. Yep. So. Yeah, and just a side note for the, so one of the comments from the public was it looked like there was buildings on the rear of the buildings, but I didn't I didn't seem to see that, and I just want to confirm that there 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 isn't rear light isn't built. I didn't think so. And they're not open late anyway. Right. right. Wait a second. I'm a, I'm a little confused here. You guys think this is going next to Cumberland Farms? Cumberland Mine is oh, Cumberland. a cigar shop. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the, yeah. yeah. So I just don't want you to think that this is parking next to the big white. No, it's, the, it's the street nine. lights on Route Nine that make all the light. Right. It's the street lights on Route. But nine. this is this is it's not Cumberland Farms that's next door. It's, it's yeah. Cumberland Mine, which yes. is uh, well, well, cigar shop. Smoking Joe's there. Yeah. So, LLC, I think. So are we doing the original lighting plan or the? Original lighting plan. Yep. Thank you. So we have to consider uh, under CEQRA, we have to do a CEQRA resolution. Do folks have environmental concerns? No. On this application, it seems like they have a uh, robust stormwater plan. People feel comfortable going ahead with CEQRA? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll do a CEQRA resolution. Motion to grant a negative declaration for site plan 54-2020 luxury box LLC as per the, per the resolution prepared by the staff. 
Uh, one, part two of the short EAF has been reviewed and completed by the planning board. Two, part three of the short EAF is not necessary because the planning board did not identify potentially moderate to large impacts. I'll second it. We have a secret resolution made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Yeah. Mr. Hunsinger? Uh, yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. Uh, next, we can consider the site plan approval resolution with the conditions that uh, we've added. Motion to approve site plan 54 2020 luxury box LLC according to the draft resolution prepared by staff with the following one waivers requested or granted two approval is valid for one year from the date of approval applicant is responsible for requesting an extension of the approval before the one year time frame has expired. If you have not yet applied for a building permit or commenced significant site work. Three, adherence to the items outlined in the follow-up letter sent with this resolution, including items A through K, including L, fence noted on site plan to be eight feet tall versus six foot as shown on drawing detail number C-501 and to extend across the entire northeast border. Item M, south entrance currently noted as 21.75 feet wide is to be a one-way entrance and needs DOT approval. Item N, a lighting plan is to be uh, of the original proposal. Second it. Okay, we have an approval motion made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the motion? We have one, a couple, two comments, but uh, the fence, I, and I didn't look at the plan in the sense, right, this minute, is it to be a privacy fence versus a chain link fence? It's wooden fence. Yeah. It's, it's in the specs. Okay. There's a detail. In yeah. It. Right. Just to confirm. And then in reference to the DOT, um, a correspondence to be included with our with the app with the file so it's not just them approving it we, we just we would like a, the copy of the correspondence that has that discussion and it's not necessarily an approval it's just confirming that the the entrance is an acceptable entrance our access point so I don't I just want to clarify, it's not it, it, because I don't know whether DOT officially says we approve this entrance. Um, we just want to confirm that this is an acceptable. So it's a DOT co correspondence that you're looking for. Okay, so we have an amended condition. Uh, amended condition number, or I'm sorry, letter M, south entrance currently 21.75 feet wide is to be one way entrance and needs DOT approval and that correspondence included in the town Final. Okay. I'll second the amended motion. <laughs> All right, we have an amended motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. Gowan? Yes. Mr. Valentine? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Ms. White? No. Mr. Traver? Yes. You're all set. Thank you so much. Do you want any of your plans back? We just re do you want any of these back? We just recycled them. Sure. Being a sweet road. You could probably get all of them. Lacking some scrap paper. Oh, there you go. Uh, that's, the, that's the last item on our agenda this evening. Is there any other business before the board? So I'm going to identify something that was pr um, provided to you. Um, I believe it's up where um, Mike is. So there was a resolution setting a public hearing from the town board to amend the uh, Queensbury Town Code to add uh, allowed uses in residential zones. And it's in reference to allowing a uh, tree service or landscaping company. And I apologize, I didn't get a chance to look at this yet. And this is probably the first time that you're looking at this information. The town board did ask for a referral, a, ref a recommendation on this. And at the moment, I don't have enough information to provide to you. 
I would ask that you look at it. There is an opportunity for um, comment. Um, if you do have additional comment, maybe I can forward it that way to the town board. Um, okay. And I, I apologize. I maybe we can uh, discuss it next month after we've had a chance to look at it. There's nothing pressing on it, is it? So unfortunately, there, the town board's public hearing is in is January 11th. And at this point, I, again, the town board can refer information or they can um, make decisions on their own. So I, it's not quite clear whether they would just move forward on an applic uh, this public hearing and, and make a decision on this referral um, or a decision on the um, adding this use to that zone. So I just want to make sure you're aware of it. It's in your hands now, but I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Um, other than right. asking you for your comments. It's okay. As soon as so, you get a chance to read it. So if members of the board have comments, they should forward them to you as soon as possible, right? That would be, the, yes. Okay. All right, we will do so. Thank you, Laura. Anything else before the board this evening? All right, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned for 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.